is an exclusive presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports. The Atlantic Coast Conference, founded in 1953, is celebrating its 43rd year of football excitement and tradition. The Clemson Tigers, one of the seven charter members, have taken these elements to the extreme. With Death Valley rituals like the intense bus ride, rubbing Frank Howard's rock, and the dash down the hill, Clemson has established itself as one of college football's elite. Today, the Tigers embark on a new journey and face the Furman Paladins for their centennial season home opener. The same Furman team that Clemson faced in 1896 in the first game in Tiger football history. It's the Paladins and the Tigers ready to roar. Frank Howard Field at Clemson Memorial Stadium. Welcome to the Exxon Jefferson Pilot Sports ACC Game of the Week. This afternoon, the Clemson Tigers host the Paladins of Furman. Hi, everybody. Along with Rick Walker, I'm Jack Corgan. Welcome to another season of ACC football. As we said in the ACC Football Today show, this is going to be a great year for college football and in particular for this conference. Well, the conference is off on the right start. And when you look at the uh, number of running backs, that have prominence that can really be in the national rankings. It is really exciting. And on the defensive side, you're going to see some play out of some of the best linebackers in America. For this game this afternoon, Clemson and Furman, well, it continues a rivalry that began 100 years ago. These two teams played in the first ever game for the Clemson Tigers, and that will be part of all the trappings that go on here this afternoon. But for Tommy West and his Clemson Tigers, the most important thing is to get their offense going. They have gone without a couple of games scoring, so Nelon Green has to get it going, and I think he's going to turn it over to his running back. He's got to make good decisions. One is to get the ball in Raymond Priester's hands. This young man has all the tools, great production, needs to bounce back from last week, and he can do it because he's got a bull of a fullback, and Emory Smith, who has a nose for the end zone. Nelon has had a great career in terms of passing efficiency this afternoon. He's going to be thrown to a young receiving core. They'll be young, but what he's got to do is make good decisions. Of course, I'd like to see him throw a little more to his tight ends. You know what I mean? Well, one tight end sticking up for the other tight ends. It's going to be a good football game here this afternoon. And as we said, it kicks off the centennial season of football here at Clemson. We'll talk about that more when we return to Death Valley. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, proud corporate partner of ACC football. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. By First Union. By Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. By Continental Airlines, more airline for your money. By CarQuest Auto Parts Store. For the CarQuest Store nearest you, call 1-800-492-PART. By your Carolina Chrysler Plymouth dealers, home of the minivan store. By Duckhead, traditional casual clothing since 1865. Life's a road trip, back your Duckheads. By your local Carolina Jeep Eagle dealer. And by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. Welcome back to Clemson's Memorial Stadium. You see the Clemson Tigers coming off the bus, getting ready for that great run down the hill. And our great guy down on the sidelines is ready to go, Mike Hogwood. <laughs> Apparently some audio problems down in the field. We'll get that corrected. The Tigers with one of the great moments in college sports right there. We are moments away from the home opener here at Clemson. We'll have the kickoff when we return to Death Valley. Welcome back to Clemson, South Carolina, as we are set to go with our kickoff to the 96th season here on Jefferson Pilot Sports ACC Game of the Week. 
Hurricane Fran came through the area but went north of here and the weather has been good. A little bit high in terms of the humidity this afternoon, but perfect football weather for early season here in South Carolina. Bobby Johnson in his third season now as the head coach of the Paladins, the former defensive coordinator here at Clemson, went six and five last year. Tommy West in his fourth season now at Clemson, trying to get his football team going. Clemson won the toss and deferred, so they want their defense, Doc, out there to set the tone early on. Makes good sense. One, you try to avoid uh, a turnover, but you put attitude on it. This is a, a festive home crowd. You've got a lot of the old players here, and you want to start off with your D. And, of course, if you are looking at those Clemson uniforms and saying they're a bit unusual, that's their throwback uniform from the 1939 season the first season in which the Clemson Tigers went to a bowl game. Michael Bryce will be kicking it off for the Tigers, the sophomore out of Newberry, South Carolina. Mark Moore and Josh Cole deep to receive the kickoff for Furman. Clemson trying to come off an embarrassment to North Carolina. The season opener for Furman, and we're underway. Bouncing kick, Cole slipped and fell, and a great break for Clemson as Furman will be backed up inside their 15 for senior quarterback Braniff Bonaventure out of Orlando against a younger Clemson defense with the exception of the secondary, which is a veteran group. Well, Andy, We're gonna knock him down. Andy Ford Ready? has been there. Dexter McLean, again, a guy on the momentum of the ACC season. Challenge is here. Bonaventure on first down, gives it to his tailback Moore, and he'll fight forward for a couple of yards. Raymond White, the first man to hit Mark Moore. Let's take a look at our Carolina Jeep Eagles starting lineups. Besides Bonaventure, Parrish Clark will start at fullback ahead of Mark Moore. Veteran receivers in Josh Cole and Jody Wade and Luther Broughton, the two-time All-Southern Conference tight end. A mix of experience and youth on the offensive line. Lee Drake at left tackle, probably their biggest lineman and best offensive blocker. Second and long for the Paladins. Quick drop out into the flat to Moore. Moore out close to the 20-yard line where Antoine Edwards, the free safety, tripped him up a couple of yards shy of the first down. Defensively for Clemson, a group coming together. Great linebacking core headed up by the freshman of the year last year, number 41, Anthony Simmons, and an experienced secondary, particularly Dexter McLean and Andre Carter. Third and let's call it a long two for Furman. Moore again touches the ball and will not get the first down. Mond Wilson coming in quick was the first man to make contact. Boy, it looked like they had a real good mesh on the offensive line. But you talk about feel. You heard about read and react. Well, watch this close. Mond Wilson. So he gets good penetration in it. Bam. He's right, right on the point of attack. Still good effort, though, by the running back. But I think Clemson was able to hold. Just what Tommy West wanted to do when Clemson deferred on the opening coin toss, make it a three and out, get good field position. Dexter McLean back to receive the punt from Jody Wade. Short kick and Clemson will start inside Furman territory at the 46-yard line following just a 25-yard punt. We'll be back with Clemson's first possession after this message from CarQuest Auto Parts. All right, y'all. Welcome back to Clemson. Jack Horgan along with Rick Walker as we get ourselves ready to go with the first play offensively for Clemson after the short punt at the 45-yard line of the Paladin. Option to Priester. And he'll pick up about seven. First contact from Seth Romaley and Rocco Adrian, but not before Priester got good yardage. Nelon Green running the show for Clemson. In the backfield, he will have 
a veteran core, and that will be something that I think Tommy West will rely on today, Doc, pounding away with the football. Yep, started off just like old time. Emory Smith, nice block point of attack. Priester again. First down, Clemson inside the 35, down to about the 32-yard line. Raymond Priester on the carry. Talented Tackle young man. It does three. help to have a great fullback in front of you. This time, Glenn Roundtree, number 75, gets the block at the point of attack. And again, you watch Priester, who runs with his eyes, has great vision. Justin Watts and Joe Woods will be the wide receivers to the left of Neilon Green on first down. Priester again on the cutback. Raymond Priester down to about the 25-yard line. Adrian and Orlando Ruff on the stop for Furman. Offensively for Clemson. Besides Green, Smith, and Priester in the backfield, we'll see Woods, Brooks, and Hall as the starting receivers. A big offensive line, Jim Bundren, a three-year starter at left tackle, and Glenn Roundtree at right guard, also a three-year starter. Sam Zander is a freshman into the ball game at tailback. Play action green. In and out of the hands of Lamont Hall. There you go, Doc. They threw it to the tight end, and he dropped the football. Oh, it's a, it's a key breaker. Here's a young man still vying for his first reception. Terrific blocker. Good play action pass. You see Green gets his shoulders squared. This is pitch and catch. A little late. Hey, I can't make up for him on that one, pal. You got to catch that one. We get a seven out of this baby. You know, Priest is not dinged up early. Working on the right leg of Raymond Priester. Third down and about two. Green option. Sanders. Romaley is there. Adrian comes along, and Clemson is shy of the first down. Seth Romaley. The strong safety coming Great up play. quickly to make the stop. Boy, he makes an outstanding play on that option. Taylor Warren and Williams, as well as Michael Brown up front. Good linebacking core. McNeil, Romele, Adrian, and Jackson. The entire starting unit from last year back for the Furman defense. And they forced the field goal try from Mike Rice. Chris Robbins will hold it. It'll be a 42-yard attempt, and it is wide right. So Furman answers the early challenge of Clemson, and we are still scoreless five minutes into this first quarter. Come on, take your time, my man. Gives us an opportunity as Tommy West talks to his kicker. I think we got all the bugs worked out audio-wise. Go down to the sidelines and our Mike Hogwood. Yeah, for those of you who couldn't read lips at the beginning of our program, don't adjust your set if you're looking at Clemson and you see that different color of orange. In celebration of the 100th year of Clemson football, they're going back to their 1939 uniforms. Of course, then, Clemson, like Furman is today, was in the Southern Conference, and back in 39, they won the Southern Conference Championship. About this uh, 39 look, it takes a little getting used to, don't you agree? Well, I know one thing, Mike. It's a good thing they're not wearing leather helmets. Anthony Simmons <laughs> would go through about a half dozen. At the 25, first down. With a two tight end set, they go to the tailback. Ernest Crosby getting his first opportunity. The sophomore out of Greenville, just up the road. Chopped down by linebacker Chris Jones. By number 57, Chris Jones. But. I like what Joe Soros is doing. They know they've got to establish a ground attack. So you got a pad on pad up front. Everybody's kind of locked on. It's going to be tough yards, but they can't give up on the run early. Four-yard pickup for Crosby, who came to Furman about 20 pounds lighter than he carries on his 190-pound frame now. Bonaventure wanted to keep the quick look, and Adrian Dingle was in his face. He was able to get it away to Bo Davis, but he was already out of bounds. Adrian Dingle had quick penetration, number 52. 
Dingle trying to build on his sack production from a year ago. He watched a quick three-step drop. Dingle gets great pressure on him. And I think this is a good move by Bonaventure. Avoid the sack. Try to make a play. It's the receiver's responsibility to keep the feet in. And you know that, Jack. You're coaching. It'll make it a third and six situation. Bobby Johnson's team feeling like they have an opportunity to be a factor in the Southern Conference race this year. Bonaventure from the shotgun. Little full screen to drop the tight end, and he dropped the football. Luther Broughton wanted to run with it before he had put it away, and a couple of drops by the tight ends early on have stalled drives. Yeah, again, can't make excuses for it. I love the play selection. Take advantage of a quick, pursuing defensive line. Try to throw underneath. It looks like maybe, who knows, he might have picked it up. Got to catch it first, young guys that are watching. Then you can run. Jody Wade back to punt. Dexter McLean never got close to the first one. He is back for Clemson. Wade got off just a 25-yarder. He averages about 38 yards in his career, and this is a much better kick. Fair catch called and taken by McLean, and a flag goes down on the play. John Keith was the guy coming down on the play. It looked like one of the Clemson guys actually bumped into Dexter McLean. We'll sort it all out, and when we return, we'll tell you what happened after these messages from your local ACC station. It's second opportunity after missing a field goal on their first try. Elon Green will have Smith and Zanders behind him. And Green on play action. Over the middle, he's got Joe Woods. Woods ahead of Romaley, who hog collars him down at the 20 yard line of Furman. Elon Green, who struggled last week, right on the money there. Well, he really does. He gets a great protection out of the offensive line, big number 75. Glenn Roundtree, again, as you'll see, middle of your screen. They get a little pull, semi sprint out, and watch that. Congestion of orange shirts, no white shirts in the vicinity. Good throw, catch, and run by the Tigers. 37 yard pickup to the fifth year senior, Joe Woods, who transferred from Ole Miss. Tigers were down here on their first possession, then got stalled. Xanders met in the hole by Bernard Scott, and he got just a couple. <laughs> Bernard Scott, the oh, junior out of St. Augustine, Florida. Oh, you talk about a committee meeting. This is isolation football here. A little veer off the cutback left, and then bam. There you are right in the hole, but a good back keeps his feet. But he didn't win that battle. That's good defense. Raymond Priester back into the ball game. Second and long for Clemson. Three wide receivers in the game for the Tigers. Green option. Not much going there. Orlando Ruff on the tackle. That was not a good football play. You know, it seems like somebody was supposed to be somewhere that they weren't. Didn't look as crisp. In Furman, 11 returning starters. This is a group with a lot of pride on this defense. They feel like they can play with Clemson. You know, we need a first down. Stay up, baby. Stand up and get a line. Third down situation. Clemson converted one of their third down opportunities in two tries on their first possession. Come on, fans. Green with time. Screen dropped by Emory Smith. Drop passes the order of the day here. And let's see what Clemson decides to do on fourth down. They'll send Mike Bryce out again to try another field yep. goal. But we can't use the opening game of the year because that was out in Carolina. This is just, yeah, you want it so bad that you fight the ball instead of allowing the ball to come right into your hands, create a nice cushion, catch it, turn, and run. It almost looks that was a good description, Doc, that this team is trying too hard yeah, really right now. They want this so bad. 35-yard attempt by Bryce, and this one is no good. So Clemson with two opportunities has come up empty. And you hear 
some disgruntlement from the fans in the stands here defense, at baby. Death Valley. Come on, guys. Tommy West you was concerned about field. fan reaction. Okay, Mike, what do you feel down on the field? I'll tell you what, Tommy West is really frustrated. Took his hat off and just threw it as far as he could a moment ago when they didn't make that first down. You get the feeling down here, this is a team that's really a little bit uptight, a little bit frustrated. And as soon as they finally put something on the board, the dam's going to break loose. But until then, this is really kind of a tight team. Looked like the pass to Joe Woods was going to do it, but then Clemson stalled. Bonaventure, deep handoff, and Crosby gets a couple. Up quickly is Mond Wilson. Yeah. That was a great example of speed, where speed wins. I mean, Furman had that one set up real nice, got the guards out in front. Mons Wilson would not be denied. Great coming underneath the play to make the stop. Wilson was 75 tackles a year ago on the inside. Tigers really feel they are eight deep, maybe even nine deep, if you will, at their four linebacking spots. Granite Bonaventure has dealt with long yarded situations and he'll face another one on third and six as Raheem Abdullah, a redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida, made first contact. Yeah, you know, you mentioned the linebackers. They're really high on Abdullah. He's a guy who had a great spring for him. They feel has all the explosion of the great backers they've had. See, that's a good read. Here's a guy who has the athleticism to read that, take a fake, and still be a factor on the play. This first quarter has been marked with drop passes on both sides. Third down situation, Furman 0 for 2 on its first two opportunities. Bonaventure will again operate out of the shotgun. Clemson is coming, and down goes Bonaventure, fumble the football. Picked up and going into the end zone is Eric Bradford, touchdown Clemson. Tony Planton planted Brandon Bonaventure, and Eric Bradford gets the first Clemson score of 96. Yeah, you know, that's what happens when you don't take a, a, take a shot at aggressive plays on first down. You get an obvious passing situation. White, William, Planton, they pin their ears back. So you beat a double. That shouldn't happen on any level. That's a great bull rush. The ball's down. Who wants it? Good scoop and run for the score. Tigers and on the board. Pressure coming from the outside that they picked up but forgot about planting up the middle. But they ran a real nice game. And when you start to get those linebackers who like Simmons, when he comes at you, he's going to get your attention offensively. And then they're able to get a big guy like Planton 275 right up the gut for a big play. Rice's extra point try is no good. And Mike Rice, three straight kicks now, has been wide right. The Clemson lead, six to nothing, on the first collegiate touchdown for Eric Bradford, a redshirt junior out of Dalzell, South Carolina. One more look and watch Anthony Simmons down at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, see, that's the key. You got to figure who gets him. Guard comes out and gets a cut. But when the guard pull a center, rather, Mark Graves comes out and Ben Hall, you got some youth playing for Furman right now. You miss a line call and all of a sudden you're in trouble. Yeah, Ben Hall, the redshirt freshman, was left alone when Mark Graves departed. Yeah. And he guessed wrong. Can't be in no man's land. Tony Blanton had a free hey, run and, at the quarterback. And as you know, the key to it is that you got to protect inside out. So you take the, the threat inside before you turn out. Hey, that's what the opening games are all about. Back to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Well, Tommy West not entirely happy. He loved the defensive touchdown, but boy, he's worried about the kicking game. He just got his long snapper, Elmer Bench, and the holder, Chris Robbins, together. And Michael Bryson, he says, okay, guys, let's talk about it. What's the problem? But they have really, he told them to get together on the sidelines and work out whatever communication problems they're having or what's going on. But he is not a very happy coach right now. But Clemson has scored points, even if it's from the defense, for the first time in three ball games. Well, you know, that is a good sign. I think Furman, if you, if you look at their standpoint, they're still hanging in. They've been in horrible field condition, and they're very fortunate to be down just six zip. But you still have life, and now you get the football. But they've got to take more chances on first down. Cole and Moore will wait another kick from Mike Rice. Much better boot this time, although it will make the sidelines and give Furman 
its best field position. Ball goes out of bounds before reaching the end zone. The kicking team will see the offense start on the 35. Mike Price is going to get the point, Doc. I don't think you'll want to come back to the sidelines. It is so tough because kickers, punters, for the most part, are a different breed. And it's a team sport, but you spend a lot of time alone. And the guys, it's a love-hate relationship. If you make it, they love you. If you miss it, they hate you. Five-yard penalty on the kickers from the previous spot. However, the receiving team is elected to take the ball 30 yards from the spot of the kick. That's James Knight, our referee. And Furman will get it at the 35 after starting their first two possessions at the 11 and the 20. They have gained just four yards of offense on their first three possessions. Play action. Bonaventure has time and has a man out near the first down marker, Jody Wade, the junior from Waycross, Georgia, will be about a half yard shy of the first down. Well, see, this is what you have to do, Jack. On first down, you got a big physical defensive line. You got to keep them off balance, not be as predictable. Get the ball on the outside. It's a good operation for the Palace. Five and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. Clemson leading six to nothing. That's the fullback, Parrish Clark, and by the spot, he should have the first down. Donald Broomfield and Lorenzo Bromel. A couple of backup defensive linemen, the first there for Clemson. And Furman gets its initial first down of the afternoon. One of the keys now to football, especially on the defensive side, is can you rotate down linemen? I mean, you've got to be able to work more than just your starters in Clemson has shown they've got the talent to get it done. That will be a concern for Furman this afternoon. They are a little thin on their offensive line. Bonaventure to Mark Moore slips one tackle, but then was shoved back by Antoine Edwards, the strong safety, and Raheem Abdullah, the outside linebacker. You know, you look at the initial contact is there. They're so physical. If you watch up front, that time Broomfield, I mean, just real physical at the point of attack. But if you're back, if you're Moore, if you're Clark, you got to hang in there for Furman and, and just try to keep it north-south and hold on to the football. Mark Circle comes into the ball game at fullback for Furman. He's a young man right around this area. Went to Daniel High School here in the Clemson area. They like him a lot. Quick handoff to Cirqua, and he is lucky to get a yard on the play. It's Lorenzo Bromel again with the stop. Bromel is, uh, he's rather excited to be playing today. I mean, this guy, he's got some hop in his step. This young man here, they think it will be a very fine member of their backfield. Wanted to start him, but Coach felt, well, you know, coming back home, maybe uh, the jitters will knock out some of his talent, so we'll set him down a bit. Another long yardage situation for Bonaventure. He'll again operate from the shotgun. Tigers showing blitz, and here they come again. Bonaventure steps up and underthrows Josh Cole. He would have been shy of the first down anyway. An awful lot of pressure on Bonaventure and a flag in the area. We have a flag on the holding on late hit on the quarterback. And it's going to be a holding call, it appears, against Furman. Jim Knight will tell us. Holding on the offense, declined, forced down. So again, the Clemson defense does its job, sets up a fourth down punting situation for Jody Wade. With Dexter McLean back for Clemson. Well, Jack, the next series for Furman. It's obvious they're going to have to move the pocket. They're going to have to roll him out, get some sprint dash incorporated because they're just not going to be able to drop back a five to seven step drop with any efficiency at all. They probably put the shotgun in to help with that area and he yeah. had a little bit of time. Yeah, a little bit of time. Wade with a short kick again. McLean's fair catch is taken at the 24-yard line of the Tigers, and that's where they'll put it back into possession. 3.22 to go here in the first half. Clemson leading 6 to nothing. That's, 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 
Welcome back to our first game of the 96 season, along with Mike Hogwood and Rick Walker, Jack Corgan, glad you could join us. And a new quarterback for the Clemson Tigers to start this possession, redshirt freshman Brandon Streeter out of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Kelton Dunnigan in the ball game at fullback as well. Streeter on first down gives it to Raymond Priester, breaking tackles, and Priester takes it out for about four yards to the 29-yard line. Michael Brown and Michael McNeil there to chop down Raymond Priester. Only four yards on that game, but that'll make a highlight clip for him. Brandon Streeter had a good spring and preseason practice. He and Billy Lucky have been battling it out for the backup job, and obviously Neilon Green pressing a little bit, so Tommy West says, well, watch it a little from the sidelines, and we'll get you back into the ball game. Streeter gives it to the fullback, Dunnigan, and he gets very little on the play. That veteran defensive front of uh, Furman headed up by nose guard Reggie Williams stopped him for not much. Jay Fear, who did not start the ball game because of a hamstring problem, their best tackler now in the ball game. Well, you know, I think it's as much as the fact that he has some drops from Elon Green. He wants Green to take a look at it. But I think it's healthy to get your backup quarterback in in the first quarter. I'm surprised more people don't do it. Fear with 129 tackles last year for the Paladins. Emory Smith back in the ball game at fullback on third and six with his first throw. And it is picked off by Bernard Scott. And he is down at the Clemson 30 yard line. The junior Bernard Scott, who the Furman coaches say may be their best athlete, steps in front of Brandon Streeter's first pass. Well, he plays a, an appropriate position to drop in. And you watch him here, good read reaction. So he gets up right there, skies. It makes the interception. That ball didn't have a lot on it, and young, what young quarterbacks do, Jack, as you know, they telegraph the throw. Try and give the youngster an early opportunity, and he gives Furman a great opportunity to get back into this football game. Furman a little late getting on the field. The huddle clock is already down to 10 as they break the huddle. Circle of the fullback didn't get out there soon enough, and now did Furman take a timeout? Yes, they were forced to take a timeout. Gives us an opportunity to talk about First Union presents around the ACC. Georgia Tech at NC State going on right now up in Raleigh. Duke and Florida State later on this afternoon. Then tonight, Carolina will battle a top 10 team up at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. Northwestern, the Big Ten champs, will be in Winston-Salem to battle Wake Forest. Maryland tries to go to 2-0 on the year against Alabama-Birmingham. And Virginia opens its season at Scott Stadium against Central Michigan. Duke and Florida State, Warwick Dunn, my pick for the Heisman this year. I love watching that young man play. And David Green had a great preseason for Duke. They're very hopeful about that young man's career at the signal calling spot for the Blue Devils. Well, he's very confident. One thing about Green, he believes he can get the job done, and that's the first fourth trait in the quarterback is confidence. And you talk about that right now. I don't think Nelon Green has a lot of confidence going. No, and I'm not sure that was because of Nelon's play, because when you look at two or three straight drops, that's not so much the quarterback as the receivers. Best opportunity yet for the Furman Paladins. Bonavich, good leg action, has Circla out in the flat, and the freshman gets it down close to a first down. Peter Ford on the play, and we may have a late hit as well as Raheem Abdullah coming after Brandon Bonavich, who might have had some late contact. I love it. I love it on first down. Got a piece of that. This young man, again, is showing us something already. Only been in the, play, in the game for four plays. I mean, Furman, this is one of those deals as an offensive player, you've got to cash in. Minimum three, but you want seven. I said Abdul, I think it was a Personal Adrian foul. Dinger. Roughing the passer. We'll tack it on for in the end of the play. Let's take one more look at the penalty. Watch the end of the play. Yeah, I see the release. You can think that's two, that's two counts at a minimum. Good call. And it was Brett Williams, not Adrian Dingle, coming off the corner. So Furman with the penalty, gets the ball down to the 10-yard line, just outside the 10, 
First down for the Paladins. A minute and a half and the clock moving here in the first quarter. Clemson leading, but the touchdown came from the defense. Crosby picking his way to about the eight yard line. Raymond White, the nose man with first contact. Number 22, Ernest Crosby on the carry for the Paladins. Now this is impressive. It really is for, for Furman because they stay on it. They're a little undersized up front. You watch Mark Gray's 52 to center. He'll stay on his block. See, right there. He stay on it. Not real pretty, but he was a nuisance for Raymond White, and that allowed the back to pick up a few yards. Pretty good lead block by the freshman, Circle. Yes, yeah, Circle was showing us something. They can pick up a first down inside the one. Bonaventure to the flats. Caught after nearly being picked off. Mark Moore stayed with the ball after Andy Ford nearly had free sailing up the sideline. Well, you know the old rule, and you know Jack as a coach. If you take a gamble at it, you better intercept it, or usually bad things happen for you. This is a near pick, and it actually hits him on the pass. What well, great concentration. How great that coach has received. Not bad at Not all bad by at Mark all. Moore. I like that. They end up getting a couple on the play. It's third down at the five. So call it almost five for the first down and about five and a quarter for a touchdown. Get out on the edge and listen. But they're going to have to wait till the second quarter to run the play. We have played 15 minutes of football here at Death Valley in Clemson. The Clemson Tigers taking a fumble in have the early lead, but Furman threatened. Back here at Death Valley in that little field of purple in the one corner of this giant <laughs> stadium here in Clemson. Thrilled that the change of possession put this third and five situation right in front of them as Furman tries to put its first score on the board. Cole in motion and now sets to the right side. Bonaventure looking that way, too tall for Broughton as tight end. He was under heavy pressure. Andre Carter on the coverage. And great pressure put on by Adrian Deagle. Well, again, those outside linebackers come at you. This ball, the timing on it was decent, but there was no accuracy on it. You got to give your tight end a chance, and he just can't because there's so much pressure. It's just a number game. They just don't have the people in the block. On to try the kick. For Furman is Jason Wells, a redshirt freshman out of Lawton, Oklahoma. Line drive, but he got it through. And Furman is on the board, taking advantage of the Scott interception to make it a 6-3 ball game, seven seconds into the second quarter. The kicking game for both sides has been wavering a little bit, shall we say? Well, yeah, when you look at early on for uh, Furman, they had a punt that was a 29-yard punt. He had a slip on the kickoff return. He had a few things not in their favor, but all that matters is that it's 6-3. Well, let's take a look at the Discus Athletic first quarter stats. Dominated statistically by Clemson, but the important factor, each side with a turnover, Clemson was able to convert theirs as Eric Bradford ran it in. But when you've got an offense still not in gear, 65 yards in the first quarter is not what Tommy West wanted to see. You know, they've had flashes, but when you drop the ball on third down, I don't care who you are, you're going to have difficulties. And it doesn't appear that they've just settled down on what they want to do, come out and just run the football, smash mouth, or, or try to create some big plays. Let's go back down to the sidelines and Mike Hockwood helmet back on and uh, he's been talking to Rick Stockstill down here so it looks like Nilot's going to go back in the game maybe they just want to hold him out for a series try to settle him down a little bit but it looks like uh, 15 and orange is coming back at number one Antoine Edwards he is back to receive the kickoff of David Burton Joe Woods is also back with Edwards Furman likes to kick this ball towards the left corner and narrow the field of return. Let's see if Burton can do that. Edwards at his one yard line. Trying to get to the wall and doesn't make it. 
Good hustling play by Jeff King, a freshman linebacker, as Edwards is stopped shy of the 15-yard line. Great coverage, it really is. You, you can see it, especially from our vantage point. They were trying to set that pick and fence up, get around that corner, rumble. Elon Green back into the ball game. The junior who came in midway through his true freshman season and has been the leader of this Clemson offense the last two and a half years now. Wanting to get things going. You got to keep in mind the last home game for Clemson. Raymond Priester went wild with nearly 300 yards on the ground. He has been quiet so far. Green on the roll. Should have been picked off by Bernard Scott in and out of his hands as they wanted Joe Woods on the flat. Well, now I have to think there's some major concern going on with Clemson. This is just, I mean, you pull the string. When you look that way, you got to see a white jersey. I mean, there's no way you can say this guy sneaks up on you. He's right out in the flat. And that's where you're just so focused on trying to make a play and avoid a bad play, and you get a bad play. Bernard Scott, who broke his leg in the game against Clemson two seasons ago, has made two big plays early on. Green on the deep handoff to Priester. He finds tough going as he gets it out over the 15-yard line. Phil Warren, the veteran defensive tackle, there to lead the charge for Furman, setting up a third and long for Clemson. All right, Furman, this is where experience starts to pay off. There's no stage right here. Real good field. See Thier right in the hole. Boy, he rejects Emory Smith. You watch that. I mean, you don't see that often. I mean, he put him right on his can. That's the way you take on the lead block. Clemson one of four on third down, trying to set up a screen. Green in trouble, trying to use his athletic ability up the sidelines. Nelon Green close to the first down, but we've got a flag in the backfield, and we might have an illegal block. Michael McNeil knocked Green out of bounds. But let's wait for the infraction. Priester, he worked his way back, got a big block. This is what you need to see out of Green, though. Make something happen. Holding call against the Tigers back at the 12-yard line. This is what you can't coach, Jack. I mean, you know, you, you draw this up and you're trying to get a double screen. Here's a guy who just has great feet. And what I like is when the receivers and running backs decide to come back and help him. He has some good chip blocks going on, but you can't get the holding in. Did you see the Furman coaching staff jumping up and down on the sidelines in the background there? When Raymond Priester peeled back to make that block to Spring Green. Holding on the offense, half the distance from the spot of the foul, repeat the down. He made a block, what they call outside the frame. Made a good block, but his hands were yeah. outstretched. Bear hug. The bear hug block. The penalty from the spot of the foul takes it back to the six yard line, setting up a third and 17 now for Clemson. Now you look at Tony Horn, who's, who's not playing today, suspended. You need your big guns. I don't know if they have a play for third and 17. Four wide receivers in the game, and it's incomplete to Joe Woods. I'm not sure what Nelon Green was intending there. Maybe a quick screen using just the wide receivers, but it didn't get executed. That's my point. They don't have a play in their repertoire for third and, and, and long. I mean, it's obvious. You got to push the ball downfield. You got to take a shot at it. Now, if you got a double pass here, which I don't believe that was the case, you were trying a little quick screen outside to the wide receiver. That case in Woods, nothing's worked. This is an offense right now that has just lost all of its confidence. Kevin Laird coming on to punt for the first time from deep in his end zone. Josh Cole, the single safety. And Laird gets a pretty good kick away. Takes a firm and bounce, however, finally down at about the 38-yard line of the Tigers. Great field position for Furman. 13-42 to play in the first half. Clemson up by just a field goal. Bobby Johnson, who has been a part of the Furman athletic scene for many, many years. The head coach now in his third season. In fact, he's the only guy on the staff who is not a Furman graduate. He, of course, a Clemson graduate. Bonovich, quick out the flat to Rotten's tight end. Luther Rotten pulling a man forward. P. 
Peter Ford had to run him down, but Luther Bratton, this 255 pound senior tight end, gets nearly five on the first down play. Yeah, this is the Haas. They're going to have to get out to him. I like what Josh Cole tried to do. He's out trying to hold up the, the fourth block for him. Big Luther. Luther's going to have to have a big role in this game. I'd like to see him down the field. Somebody on each side offensively is going to have to attack the deep thirds with a football. This is a veteran Clemson secondary, but not an overly large one. Bonavich on the slant play. Not much for Mark Moore. Chris Jones and O.J. Childress, the backup inside linebacker, has stopped him after a short game. T. Jones, Childress, Simmons, Wilson, they have four of the finest inside backers you're going to find. Everybody can run. They got nice size, and they love to hit you. Third down situation. Furman has not converted on third down here this afternoon. Wade and Cole to the right of Bonavich are out of the shotgun with 10 on the shot on the game clock and winding down. They pick up the pressure to the sidelines, in and out of the hands of Bo Davis. Through single coverage from Peter Ford, they had the first down. Well, that's what you want. This is what you want. They had good pass protection. Here you see Bonavitcher. This is the best he's had all day. Puts a nice little rope on it, goes right out to Davis. You got to make the play. You got to make the play. Boy, you were threatening, knocking on the door, the great opportunity, and you get another drop. Been surprised how many guys have not extended for the ball, Doc. They're really trying to cradle it against their body. I know he wanted to protect the ball from the defender, but he was not They've very lost aggressive. Confidence. They've the lost ball. confidence right. in their hands. You receiver, you got to catch with the paws. Jody Wade will try and pooch this ball inside the 20. And Circla had it, but couldn't oh. control it. What? It goes into the end zone. Not Circla. I take that back it was Seth Romaley who had the chance but it'll be first down for Clemson at their own 20 yard line next Saturday we'll be in Charlottesville for what should be a dandy the conference opener between the rising Maryland Terrapins and one of the best programs in the country now the Virginia Cavaliers that should be a dandy beginning at noon here on the Exxon ACC game of the week well that's going to be some fireworks baby fireworks big time Tiki Barber the, and defense both those both great teams. linebackers yeah, that's both right. of them have defensive units that they're ready to brag about first and ten for Nelon Green at his own 20 yard line Priester trying to find running room but Daryl Smith shooting the gap wrapped him by the ankles and it's a gain of about three well, that was a great play by Daryl Third on the team and tackle. See, you look at this, you watch up front. Nice push block between Trimble and Butler. Get a nice little press. And right there, Smith comes in, grabs those cleats, and brings them down. The Clemson offensive line has only two returning starters in Bundren and Roundtree. They like the promise of the youngsters on the line, but they are inexperienced. Green on the bootleg. That's his tight end, Lamont Hall. His first catch is a Tiger. And a Clemson first down. Seth Romaley knocked him out of bounds. Well, Lamont, you make it sound good, pal. Trying to get you a football. He dropped the earlier one. And, and Jack, you know what it's like when they come back to you. Boy, you want that ball so bad, he cradles it again, doesn't use the hands, but he secured it. Clemson showing some life signs now. The education major in his third season out of Clover, South Carolina. Tigers get their second pass completion. Emory Smith, the fullback, trying to spin away from tacklers, ran into the bear hug of Orlando Ruff at about the 38-yard line. Well, you know, you watch Hall now as he blocks. There you saw Smith with a great run inside. <laughs> he was just trying to maul Bernard Scott. There's nothing better than after you make a reception, then you go out to block. It just perks you up for any tight ends or fullbacks that have ever been in offense and don't get a lot of passes. Second and five after the run by Emory Smith. And it's Priester. And Priester will 
will be shy of the first down as B.J. Pate and Colin Rogers were there to stack them up for Furman. Coach Johnson, now he can sort of sense that he lost an opportunity, had a drop pass for a first down, and a chance to make a great special teams play inside the five. And now Clemson is starting to kind of grind it up, pick up some momentum. He needs a big play defensively. Call it two. Green on the option. And he'll be stopped shy of the first down. Daryl Smith. They did not have a good mesh on that option. He wanted to pitch it, it appeared, but Raymond Priester was behind him. Talk about option football. Brian Daler, number 64 in white. Watch how he strings this out right in the middle of your screen. That is great footwork. Kept the shoulder square, and that allowed the Calvary to come in and run it down. So Smith coming to make a play. But Brian Daler at the point of attack, big play, kid. Kevin Laird will punt it away for Clemson, his second of the afternoon. The first was a 37-yarder, and he nails this one. Fair catch called by Josh Cole back at his 10-yard line. punt by Kevin Laird backing up Furman. These two teams played 100 years ago in the first ever football game for the Clemson Tigers back in 1896. The centennial season being celebrated here with Lots of activities. We're going to honor the Centennial All-Star team at halftime. They had a big banquet last night. First down, Ernest Crosby trying to run to his left. Short yardage on the play. Raymond White, number 97, leading the charge for Clemson. One of my old teammates, Jeff Bostic, was honored last night. He was down on the field early on. and One of the original hogs, a guy who could get it done. He was tough as a Tiger. I'm happy to see Jeff as part of that team. Now they have had some great football players here at Clemson. Right now there are 22 Clemson Tigers playing in the National Football League. Second and long for Furman. Moore trying to get outside and he is not going to go very far. Howard Bartley came on first and then Howard Simmons finished him off. Or Anthony Simmons finished him off. Now, they're so strong up front. And don't forget, folks, they're also platooning players. Now, you watch that defensive line now. See, they're manhandling people up front. You got an orange shirt on. They're just starting to throw people around and get to them. And this is why Furman is going to have to come up with something big in terms of pushing the ball downfield. Anthony Simmons, freshman again of the year. And you watch him here, Antoine Edwards. They keep a good base, and they're just they're angry. When you're mismatched physically you have to be effective on first down and Furman has not had great success in that area setting up a lot of third and longs quick screen and Mark Moore is met by a host of Tigers first contact from Anthony Simmons Raymond White there to finish it off yeah you know the kid I mean Simmons he's a freshman freshman of the year he reads his keys well now you watch him kind of float out he avoids the block keeps his balance and makes the first hit that's exceptional athletic ability, but also tenacity. He just wants to be there. Anthony Simmons, who made 21 tackles for Spartanburg High School in the South Carolina Championship game a couple of years ago. Uh, he's rough. He is rough. You know, and the most amazing thing, he plays at about 210 pounds well, you know, in the middle. He's played in 13 games. In 10 of those 13 games, he's been in double figures and tackles. Animal, animal. Jody Wade from his end zone. Yes, it could have. Dexter McLean backed up inside his 40. Trying to get to the corner. Picks up a block in. It's a good return by McLean out near midfield. That's where the Tigers will set up shop when we return. 6.36 to play here in the first half. Clemson by three. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Welcome back to Clemson where the Tigers lead Furman six to three with six and a half to go here in the second quarter. The two teams in this defensive struggle have combined for just 124 yards of total offense. Turnovers have set up both scores. 
Green looking deep downfield. Now he's scrambling. And Elon Green fumbled the football. It's still loose. And who's got it as the scrum continues? Elon Green on the carry a fumble on the play. They'll keep pulling, but this one of the unique. officials this spotted it. fun when you're at the bottom of one of these deals. Ryan Daler was the guy who knocked the ball free. And coming up with the football was Jamie Trimble to bail out Elon Green. Elon can't win for losing. Here he gets pretty good pass protection. And he makes a decision. Okay, I'm going to go. Then he starts to pick his way. you got to tuck that ball away. you got to be safe with the ball. It's knocked out. Good play by Daler. Daler comes in. The ball's down. And now Furman, boy, there was opportunity. They let it slip away. It ends up being a first down for the Tigers. Stop momentarily while they reset the down markers. Clemson has all three of its timeouts left. Furman used one in the first half. Good thing, Jack. I'm going to go round. I think that would be Raymond Priester. <laughs> and he has room. Priester. Inside the 25, best run of the afternoon for the junior out of Allendale, South Carolina. Go on with your hoss. 17 yard gain for Raymond Priester. Runs in up front, Butler, Trumbull, Roundtree. See that offensive line starting to get a good feel for his great crash block on the left side. Watch him pick himself. You know, he's a patient runner with explosion. It's a rare combination for a guy to be able to pick his spots, still avoid the tacklers, and keep going north south. I like this guy, man. One of those kids we're going to see a lot on Sunday. Daryl Smith and Adrian both missing as Priester this time gets just a couple. Daryl Smith with better success that time. This Clemson offense has not scored a touchdown here at home since early in the fourth quarter of their game with Duke. Their final game of the 95 season was in Columbia where they bopped their arch rivals the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Kind of hard to imagine. You look at the talent they have in the skill spots. Bootleg, green, pressure, and down he goes. Bobby Hubbard, a redshirt freshman out of Charlotte with a big defensive play. A loss all the way back to the 29-yard line. It'll be third and long for the Tigers. But Coach Steve Wilson has done a great job with this defense. I mean, they're in the right position from a fundamental standpoint. They're doing it right. I mean, these kids get on you. They're able to close, collapse. Bobby Hubbard that time, again, as you mentioned, young man, that uh, when you get a guy like Green in your grasp, you better bring him down. You see, nobody's open. The bad news for Clemson is that they don't have people open downfield. Looked like he wanted to dump it off to Lamont Hall as tight end, but Orlando Ruff was right there. Green will operate from the shotgun with four wide receivers. Priester alongside him in the backfield, and he'll go out on the route. But he throws short, gets the completion to Kenya Crooks, but he's 10 yards from the first down. Yeah, what's Crooks doing? Lead to Kenya Crooks. I mean, I've never, I've never understood this. Well, I mean, that's where you got to know down the distance. You've got to get where you can help your team. That's a pretty good operation, except for you're out of grass. I mean, you're out of bounds with nobody around you. David Richardson is going to come on. He is from right here in Clemson to attempt a 40-yard field goal. Mike Bryce missed a couple in the first quarter. And Richardson is perfect. Just over four minutes to play here in the first half. The Tigers again kick their lead out to six. Time out on the field. We'll return to Death Valley after these messages. A hot day here at Death Valley, and the fans on the sidelines come into good use. We could use one up here. Just glad, though, that the weather's will take the heat after all the rain and wind destruction of Hurricane Fran yes. that went north of here. There was a lot of concern that it was going to come right into the heart of South Carolina. It went a little farther north. Hope all those people cleaning out are doing all right. David Richardson's kickoff will also sail out of bounds. So Richardson, like Mike Bryce, can't keep the kickoff in play, and Furman will get it out of the 35-yard line. 
Uh, again, we talk about the game of field position, how special teams will have a factor. And all of these little things, but I just can't get over the fact that Clemson's offense, you know, cannot find the end zone. Clemson getting the 40 yard field goal from David Richardson. Moved 29 yards on the drive before the walk on got his first points as a Tiger. Just 33 yards of offense so far from Furman, only five on the ground. Bonaventure, play action, has time and has a man, Josh Cole, out close to a first down at the Paladin 45 yard line. On the coverage, number 29. Again, when they throw on first down, they've had some success. And when they give him time, they've had some success. Well, I think the play action pass or the quick slant or a little fold screen, those kinds of things yeah. on first down are go going to be their best opportunity. Or you got to go max protection and, and, and throw the primary receiver and give a guy a shot. Because if you protect him, I mean, Bonaventure's shown us he can throw it. Third first down of the afternoon for the Paladins. Again, Bonaventure saw Raheem Abdullah coming and hit the deck. It'll go as a sack for Abdullah back at the 38-yard line. Boy, Abdullah, here's a guy, USA Today, all honorable mention, All-American. Great tools, good skills. Uh, again, we talked about his great summer camp and, and spring ball. They think he is going to be outstanding. Out of Fletcher High School in the Jacksonville area. 6'6", 230 pounder who can fly. 250 to play here and the clock moving in the first half. Second and long for Bonaventure and Furman. Clemson's coming again. The screen to Broughton. He is able to get to the 40 yard line. Only a two yard pickup on the play. Andre Carter, the strong safety. Came up quickly. That otherwise could have been a good play for Furman. Yeah, they went to it before, had some success with it. This time the safeties, again, Carter was there. I think about last year, Brian Dawkins, Leamont Evans, and this experience that Clemson had at the two safeties. And they're still trying to make some things happen. What I'd like to see Furman do at this point is you got to take a shot downfield. I go max protection and, and give Barbara Victor a shot to use his arm. Letting the clock wind down to just about a second before the huddle clock expires, and then Furman will take time with exactly two minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Clemson leading Furman nine to three. Furman has gone a long time in this rivalry against the Tigers without scoring a touchdown. They lost 27 to six at Clemson two seasons ago. Coming up at halftime, we're going to go down and talk to Mike Hogwood about it. Hog, you tell us what's happening at halftime here this afternoon. Well, it's still going to be hot down here, guys. You may see behind me several of these gentlemen walking in coats and ties. These are all ex-Clemson Tiger football players. They're a member of that centennial team that Jack talked about earlier in our broadcast. Some of the great players in Clemson football history. We're going to get a chance to talk to a couple of them. Jeff Davis and Perry Tuttle were on that great 81 team. They'll be here. Plus, we'll have our regular features. We'll have our best to the ACC, a look at the early stats, tell you about our player of the week, and we'll have our play of the week as well. Plus, we're also going to try to get a word from Tommy West as he heads off to the locker room, but I don't think he's going to be very happy right now. Some of those centennial all-stars that Mike talked about standing there on the sidelines, there have been names throughout the year from the glory days under Frank Howard through the Danny Ford era and Tommy West rekindling the Clemson excitement the last couple of seasons. It's been a struggle so far here in 96. But I think as that offensive line comes around for the Tigers, you're going to see this team improve. Well, they definitely, they have the bodies. I mean, they got a defense that's real impressive. They just got to get some continuity on offense. Furman 0 for 7 on third down here in the first half. Bonaventure trying to step up and find some time, but he cannot. Raheem Abdullah with his second sack on this possession. And this is a classic coverage sack. 
because the guys in the secondary did a fantastic job. See, he had a little time. He steps up. They collapse in the secondary. Nowhere to go. And again, Mr. Abdullah. Dexter McLean will go back for the punt. Time, out on the field. time called by Clemson this time to stop the clock with 144 to play. To continue the tradition of senior sidewalks here at Clemson. Your sidewalk will be this Clemson offensive unit, as you see Tommy West gathered around him, are the special team players. But, Doc, let's get back to what we talked about. A big offensive line, an offensive line that they think has talent. But really, only Glenn Roundtree and Jim Bundren, the three-year starters now at left tackle and right guard, are guys who have played under fire, if you will, yeah. with a lot of experience. And there is only one other veteran player, the fifth-year senior, Jamie Trimble, at center. The other guys are, are young guys, and you, you have the growing pains. Yeah, young but big and strong and uh, have been around, understand this tradition. And they have not been the problem so far. Uh, I had an offensive change my junior to senior year at UCLA. Whenever you get a new coordinator, as you know, it takes you, you start thinking. And you know, you don't, you no longer react. The toughest thing is to see seniors not reacting. You know they can play, but they're trying to get the new nomenclature down. They're trying to get themselves in position. And it takes usually three or four weeks before you start to really see them peak. Bobby Johnson's goal here was to maybe sneak in and spring the upset, certainly to give a good account of themselves. And Use that momentum to propel them into yeah. the Southern Conference chase. Well, he's in it. I mean, yes, he's he is. In it. He's just a, a tip ball, an interception, a fumble recovery away from being in it. Jody Wade has been a busy guy because of that Clemson defense. The Tigers have 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Now they drop a man off. But they're coming after the punt. Wade got it away, but it's a short kick. They ruffled. Get the it bounce. takes a pretty good bounce for Furman, and it will die just inside the Clemson 30-yard line with 132 to play in the first half. That's where the Tigers will have it. Second quarter in Raleigh, NC State trailing Georgia Tech, but that's a very young, well, that's a young game because yeah, both those teams both have some young players. Yeah. Both starting new quarterbacks, Joe Hamilton for Georgia Tech, Jose Laureano getting yeah. the call for that's the Wolfpack. The that's the key. Signal callers. Lots of veteran running backs in the conference this year, but less experience at the quarterback spot. They didn't anticipate that being a problem here at Clemson with the experience of Neilon Green, but he's off to a slow start so far. Yeah, he's got to learn Coach, Coach Moody's system. On the roll, Green trying to find some time and some room and gets neither. No gain on the play. Brian Daler and Phil Warren on the tackle. They are without Tony Horn, suspended for at least this game. They are out without Antoine Wyatt, who would have been back, a big play guy who was dismissed from school for off-the-field problems. And that certainly speed. has to be a factor a in their speed. passing game. A lot of experience. Herman showing blitz. And they give the ball to Raymond Priester. He picks his way out to about the 37-yard line. But the clock moves with 45 seconds to play in the first half. Two timeouts remaining for Clemson. And they show no indication right now that they want to stop the clock. Well, they don't seem to have a scheme that can allow them to get the ball downfield. And, and this will hurt them. This will catch, catch them later on in the year when you get in a tight ball game. They've got the power. And they've got Priester. And they've got Smith. But you would think that that would give you the makings of a much better play-action football team. Clemson will have the ball to start the second half because they won the toss and deferred. But now, after all of that, they call a timeout because the huddle clock was down to three. Again, some disorganization cost the Tigers. And not only did they have to waste another timeout, they ran off about 25 seconds of the clock. You know what this team needs right now? I'm waiting to get in the locker room. They, <laughs> they need to get out of here. I mean, sometimes you just need to go, okay, that's the end of this. We'll come back in the third quarter and try our luck because we'll get the ball back. Because, you know, the, when you lose a bowl game, they get spanked. They get spanked against uh, Tar Heels. And all of a sudden, you start doubting yourself. Confidence is real low right now, and they need to be massaged. This is not a chance where you kick them in the butt. They need some hugs. <laughs> this group needs some hugs. Well, two teams that have great expectations for 96 will be 
the featured teams in our game next week, the Maryland Terrapins with Brian Cummings at the helm, open the season with a victory against Northern Illinois. They'll play Alabama Birmingham later this evening, and Virginia will open the campaign against Central Michigan tonight. Two of the members of the all-centennial team here with the Tigers awaiting the halftime ceremonies. Now Maryland fans hope that Radcliffe Thomas gets a chance to play at a mild separation of the shoulder. Maryland would love to have him on their defense. 14 seconds to play here in the first half. Ryan Wofford and Justin Watts, the wide receivers to the left of Elon Green. Quick toss to Watts, the converted quarterback, up the sidelines. Watts into Furman territory, out of bounds at the 35-yard line, but there are only five seconds left to play in the half. Rocco Adrian knocked Watts out of bounds, the true freshman out of nearby Florence, South Carolina. Well, they go back to this. This seems to be their way to, to get long, long yardage. They had a third and 30-plus. They went to this play, didn't get much to Woods. That's good running catch. But, but defensively, they broke down. down. But that's that inexcusable. That should never happen. You have to hearken back to that time lost on the timeout call from 40 some seconds when the ball was put into play to the nearly 15 seconds remaining when they had to call time. Offense is like a high performance engine. You just got to torque it here or there. This could be the final play of the half. Four wide receivers for Green. And he'll air it to the end zone. Has a man out there and broken up in the end zone. Good defense by Michael McNeil. And that will do it for the first half of action here in Death Valley. It was close. See, I think that was better than rolling out, getting caught for two yards. They had a chance at it. The Furman Paladins, big underdogs here, have played tough on defense, have limited Clemson to just a field goal on offense. Mike Hogwood has Clemson head coach Tommy West. Well, I know you want more production out of your office. Seems like one big play, they get it, that dam's going to break loose. Yeah, well, I hope that's the case. Right now we're struggling a little bit. We just, we, we're not making plays. I and mean, we're dropping balls, throwing intercepts. You know, we got to come back and make plays. The defense, though, has been uh, overpowering. Our defense has played really well. I thought our defense played good last week, so they wore out, but we played well on defense. What are you going to tell the guys that have time? Well, we got to come back and make plays. I, mean, I, I think they're trying hard. I think they're working. They're maybe overdoing it. But we got to make plays right now. That's Tommy West, head coach of Clemson, headed to the locker room. And as you heard, he's going to stress to his team, making plays, especially on offense. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by your neighborhood Exxon dealers and distributors who invite you to stop by for a gasoline that helps keep your fuel system clean. Exxon 93 Supreme. Rely on the Tiger by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. By your hometown Carolina Dodge dealer and the new Dodge. By Bell South, it's all here. By Outback Steakhouse, home of the world famous Bloomin' Onion. Outback Steakhouse, no rules, just right. By Discus Athletic Activewear. Discus Athletic, the one thing to wear for every sport. And by Winn-Dixie, the low price leader. Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive presentation of the Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, proud corporate partner of ACC football. Exxon, rely on the Tigers. By Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. By Continental Airlines, more airline for your money. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. By Mazda. Experience cars and trucks built with a passion for the road. Mazda. By Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. And by Food Lion, extra low prices and more. Teams coming back out onto the field. Mike Hogwood has Bobby Johnson of Furman. Yeah, well, the Furman Paladins have a lot of enthusiasm coming back here. Just a touchdown down. Coach, you got to feel good where you are right now. We feel great right now. We think uh, we can do some things on offense in the second half. Continue to play great defense, but I think our defense has really played well. And hopefully we can get a break at the end of the game and have a chance to win this thing. What's your strategy? Are you going to try to go for the big plays here? We're going to have to loosen them up a little bit. I think they got a bunch of them up there on the line of scrimmage, and if we can loosen them up, 
that ought to help our running game. And one thing we got to do is keep our defense off the field so much and, and control the ball some more. All right, good luck to you. Thank you Bobby Johnson ready to go with the Affirmative Paladins. And I really noticed that, Jack and Doc, as they ran by. This is a team that really believes they're in the game now and they've got a shot at beating Clemson. Mike and, and Doc, you and I have talked about this before as we look at the first half possessions for both Furman and Clemson. So much from a statistical point of view, we get caught up into third down conversions. But many times, and we've seen it in this game, first down efficiency or inefficiency right. really dictates the drive. Much more, much more important because it allows you to change what you're going to do offensively and to stay on the more of, of the attack form. Bonaventure's had a fine game with the exception of the fumble that was translated into points against him. But I think this guy has a nice arm, can get it done. And the second half, not that they're in the driver's seat, but they're in good position. Clemson will have the football to start the second half. They won the opening toss and deferred to the second half kickoff for an opportunity to set the tempo. And it appeared that it was going to work early on as they had the ball twice in Furman territory. But Mike Bryce missed a couple of field goals. And then on the first possession of the second half, uh, freshman Brandon Streeter threw an interception that led to the Furman field goal. They've been climbing uphill after those two missed field goals at home in front of a, a crowd that was real enthusiastic and that, since that point they've been trying not to make mistakes and as a result have not played fluid football. David Burton will tee it up for Furman with Antoine Edwards and Joe Woods the deep men numbers one and two respectively that's Edwards he'll be the likely target as Furman likes to kick it towards that left corner. Very warm day here in Death Valley. Not unexpected for the first weekend of September in this part of the country. And David Burton gets the third quarter underway. This one will stay in bounds to Edwards at his one yard line. Trying to find a seam and gets dropped just over the 20 yard line. Bobby Hubbard, the guy there first for the Furman Paladins, where Clemson will put it in play behind Nelon Green. Nelon in the first half did not have a lot of success throwing the football. Had the one long gainer to Joe Woods, a 37 yarder. A couple of drops for both sides in the first half. I'd like to give you a steady diet at number 27. Priester on first down. Daryl Smith is there quickly for number Furman. And Raymond Priester, the the Jr., who gained 64 yards in the first half, will get a couple. Second and eight. You know, sometimes coordinating, you spend so much time trying to keep your defense off balance that you keep your offense off balance. These guys need to know what they are. They are a running football team. And I'd crank up Priester and tell him that, you know, we're going to go, baby. We're going to ride you. Keep in mind, this Furman team, while a 1AA school, is a very experienced defense. All 11 starters back. And they have played well so far. Green on the play action. Steps up, and there's nobody there. Down he goes. Michael Brown on the hit. Michael Brown, the fifth-year senior out of Commerce, Georgia, with a big hit for the Paladins. You see Brian Wolf at 25 was covered like a glove. Kevin Jackson ate him alive for Furman. So he just takes away his primary receiver, and see there's nobody to drop the ball down to. That's just great fundamental defense. I mean, those guys are doing exactly what they're told to do. Michael Brown there, 99, applying the pressure. 250, guy with great leverage. And again, Clemson is, is not the climbing uphill. Third and seven, shotgun for Nelon Green. And overshoots his target, Brian Wofford. And the Clemson Tigers will have to punt it away. That brings up fourth down for the Tigers. See, when you have a pretty decent play on first down, you, you run the ball to Priester. I come back on second down, I run the ball to Priester. I come back on third down, I run the ball to Priester. Until you stop Priester, then I run him. Well, he only gained two yards on Doesn't matter. Down I keep coming at you. Okay. I keep coming at you. I'd make you do something. I mean, look at the alternative. Kevin Laird, good first half in his first experience as the full-time punter. Doesn't hit this well, but gets a nice bounce. And 
Furman will have the ball just inside their 35 yard line. We apparently are experiencing some transmission difficulties for those of you having problems with the pictures or the sounds. We apologize. We're getting them taken care of. Talking about 96 being the year of the tailback here in the Atlantic Coast Conference and the top five rushers from a season ago are all back and they are all very good. But they need the football in order to to hit those numbers. Granite Bonaventure, 8 of 13 in the first half, and he's going to put it up with some time. Simmons pressures him, and it goes in and out of the hands of Jody Way. It'll be second and 10. I see they're not, not in trouble. When you don't convert on first down, then you put yourself in a situation now where you're going to get a little predictable. Wade played that well. I think his quarterback, I think he wanted Bonaventure, wanted him to go downfield, try to hit a big one. Well, the rule is if your quarterback's in trouble, either you take off on the fly or you come back to you the come back. Well, he started, then he came back, he started to go again. Got no man's land. Second and ten. They take Broughton the tight end and flex him out on the right side. Counter play to Moore, the tailback, trying to find some running room, just got stacked up. Tony Plant, the junior out of Pendleton, South Carolina, leading the charge for the Tigers. You said it right, partner. He led the charge. I mean, you're talking about post and crush. Here's a guy that doesn't give up pad placement. See, they get outside, they never give up that outside shoulder. And see, at that point, still make defense wins because these guys on the Clemson side fly to the football. And a little counter action to get rid of the linebackers, but the guys up front stack the play. 0 for 8 on third down for the Paladins this afternoon. They're just rushing four. Now a late linebacker blitz, and they've got a good screen set up on the far side. They have got first down territory and more as Mark Moore takes it into Clemson territory at the 44-yard line. Tim Sorrells, the offensive coordinator, with a good play call for Furman. Oh, that was sweet. 21-yard pickup. You know, sometimes you talk about over-aggressive defensive lines, quick pursuit. What you do is you counter things, a little sprint right, half sprint throwback. And because of that aggressive style of Clemson, there's nobody in the screen. I like to see big number 79. Hey, Lee Drake, get on your horse, pal. Don't jog and wait on the back. Get your rear end downfield. He's running as yeah, fast as he can. Oh, no coach. way. No way. <laughs> Moore again on the counter play. Picks his way forward for a couple of yards. It'll be a second and long. Mark Moore is just 5'8 and 175 pounds. But last year nearly ran for 1,000 yards for the Paladins. We've got that little deceptive shake and bake you like. You gotta have it. Again, good feet, keep your shoulders square. Some guys know that when they can feel contact and they, they, they get that extra yard, yard and a half on contact. When you're not very big in that running back spot, you better be able to avoid it or minimize it. And, and be smart. Give him a three yard pickup, second and seven for Furman. Double tight end set. Bonaventure is in trouble but steps out of it and now will run the football and has room up the sidelines chased out of bounds by Michael Allen but not before the Paladins pick up another first down. Now here's an offensive unit now that's starting to play with confidence. How he avoids this rush only the second look will give it to a good play action fake. There's Tigers everywhere. See, I like what he does. He still presents the problem to defense. He might throw the football. That allows him a chance to run by the chain. Fifth year play. senior, Brandon Bonaventure out of Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando, Florida. Has been starting on and off for the last three years for the Paladins. Has it first down at the Clemson 32. Counter action. Crosby stacked up by Anthony Simmons at the 30-yard line. <laughs> How about that, Bob? Is he good? This kid has it. Freshman, freshman of the year. Here's a guy. You get him a little bit out of position, but he recovers so well. Here's Drake actually puts a hand out for him. You, you can't block this guy with arms. You got to put a pad right in his chest. These guys react. They beat the blocks. They square up. Bam, they make the shot. Abdullah there to help finish it off, but Ernest Crosby, I think next time, will not hesitate. He'll run oh, no, to no. the edge and try and get what he can get. No, not against the Tigers. These guys can run. Second and eight. Furman's best offensive drive of the game, but Bonaventure is going to be sacked. 
Coming from the outside, Raheem Abdullah with his third sack of the afternoon. Yeah, Abdullah is a guy that, that lives up to the billings. Honorable mention, USA Today All-American. You're a guy that get off blocks. You look on one side, you got Dingle. They keep pressure, they funnel you in. They've got good play by their tackles. There's nowhere to go. I would think too, Doc, at six foot six with the big wingspan, he's gonna make it tough for that backside tackle to get a good lock on him yeah. because he can ward him disengage. off that long yeah, stretch. Guy, he'll disengage. They'll go with two receivers and a flex tight end to the right of Bonaventure on third and 13. Trying to roll out of trouble. Breaks one tackle, avoids another, but down he goes. Anthony Simmons there again. Do you almost get the feeling that Clemson has 15 guys on the field and Furman has like six or seven? Brandon Bonavich would think yeah, that way. He, he feels that way. It, it appears that they give him a little 34 look. The four backers standing up, and then here's Dingle on the outside. See, they keep good position. They continue to funnel you into the inside. That's where White, Williams, and, and Bradford, these guys come up. There's nowhere to run. Seventh sack of the afternoon for the Clemson defense. Jody Wade will try and pin Clemson with this punt. A chance here. Romele couldn't handle one earlier in the ball game. This time he'll grab it inside the five down at the two-yard line. So a long way for Clemson to go, but they lead midway through the third quarter. Welcome back to Death Valley, along with Rick Walker and Mike Hogg with Jack Horgan. Glad you could join us. Clemson backed up deep in their own territory at their own two-yard line. They went three and out on their first possession of the second half. Emory Smith, the fullback, breaks one tackle and spins out to about the five-yard line. Had he been able to keep his feet, there was nobody around him. Well, you know, it gets a time where, you know, you, you say you're all a team and you, you, won't, you want to believe that. But this offensive group, they really have to look at that defensive guy and say, we owe you one. That's just that's good defense, great leg drive by Emory. He won't quit. You're right. He would have had some daylight. Second and seven from the five. Wofford splits to the left in a two tight end set. Smith again, and he tries to carry guys, but gets just a couple. Reggie Williams, the nose man. Riding along on the fullback's back, and it'll be third and about five. Maybe another yard, make it third and four. That's really developed in some smash mouth football. You, you watch everybody's good pass plays for Phil Warren, Daler again, a good mesh. You watch 82, Lamont Hall, tight end for Clemson. On third down, it's Priester trying to get to the corner. Good block on the edge by Joe Woods on the cornerback, and that gets the Clemson first down out across the 15-yard line. Uh, you comment, you made a comment in the last series that it was only two yards, and you're right, not a lot in this, but boy, it gives you confidence. There you see Smith, you see Woods, you had you had Hall, everybody pad on pad, everybody square. A good back to find some daylight. Joe Woods matched up pretty well against the cornerback, Michael McNeil, didn't allow him to fill. Priester now with 74 yards on the afternoon. Priester will bring this one back. It looked like Lamont Hall or maybe Holland Postel. Yeah. Holland Postel, the right tackle, was ahead of the count. In the offensive line, you start to feel your oats a bit. You know, you're starting to run the ball. You can just sense the good things are about to happen, and you get a little eager. Ball start, we'll move the ball back to about the 10 yard line. So it'll be first and 15 for the Tigers. Jack, I think this is the remedy right here. This is the cure for Clemson football. Just pound it on the edge. I mean, I think this is the best thing they can do right now until they make a play, score a touchdown, and snap the streak of scoreless quarters. I tell you right now, you can sense it in the Clemson fans after the ball loss and the bad game in Chapel Hill last Saturday, they're very nervous because yeah. they are very quiet. They're in not the having fun. They're not having fun. Priester on the uh, option pitch. 
A good block by Kenya Crooks, and he takes it over the 20-yard line before Orlando Ruff knocks him down. Gain of more than 10 on the play. Yeah, see, this is tough for football. And, you know, and teams need to understand what their personality is about because that's where you're going to get your best production. Hey, Emory Smith with another crushing block. Woods out there trying to contribute. Well, maybe a little face mask there, but just slight. And give the ball to your best football player. Raymond Priest is the best player on this field. you got to ride it. 230-pound junior out of Allendale Fairfax High School. They say he is the first Division I player ever from the Allendale area here in South Carolina. Green on play action. Has time on the post route. That came to Crooks. And Crooks is still on his feet. Good block by Justin Watts. And he takes it down to the Furman 24 yard line. 54 yard pass and run from Neilan Green to Kenya Crooks. Well, it all starts when you can run the football. Then you start getting those linebackers. Look how tight there is. See, you get those inside backers in, you can open up downfield. Good throw and catch, and boy, do I like Watts. Number 16, he comes in right there. Gives you a nice little block, and I love receivers that are unselfish to get downfield. That is an excellent throw and catch. Clemson showing some life. You can be even more impressive with Justin Watts. He's a quarterback. Priester, big hole. Priester barreling down to the 10-yard line. Kevin Jackson and John Keith carried along, but Raymond Priester moves the chains ahead farther. Glenn Roundtree, big number 75. Look at the point of attack. Tag block on the center. Boy, Trimble and Roundtree, they crushed Williams on that one. There's Priester rumbling downfield, shoulder square, north-south running. Clemson's starting to get a field. Timeout called on the field with 5.40 to play here in the third quarter. Clemson trying to drive for a touchdown. We'll be back with more after this. Raymond Priester a yard shy of crossing the century mark here in the kickoff to the home schedule of the centennial season for the Clemson Tigers. Set seven marks a year ago on his way to becoming another 2,000-yard rusher for the Tigers. Priester this time does not get a whole lot because Brian Daler grabbed him as he crossed the line of scrimmage, gain of maybe a yard. But one thing about the fullback, Emory Smith, in this deal, he has got to recognize Claw. And, and I think there was a little bit more of Daler than he than, than needed to be. And you've got to clean that up as the fullback. He decided to, to run beyond it. And Priester couldn't get away. Smith will check out of the ball game as well as Lamont Hall. And the Tigers will come out in a four wide receiver set with Priester the lone setback behind Green. They can not get a first down. It is second and goal. Green option to Priester. Trying to find daylight, and there is none. Initial penetration by Orlando Ruff to disrupt the play in the ends. Daler and Brown make the play. Well, again, you're best at what you practice most often. And when you get into these, you know, these strange formations and you're trying to spread people out, run option against a well-disciplined defense, this is what you get. And it throws you out of your rhythm. You take your fullback out of the game, you get away from what you do best. Michael Brown, who missed the 94 season with a broken wrist, his second year is the weak side tackle on that front line for the Paladins. Third and goal. Green with time. Trying to find somebody and he is going to be shy of the end zone. Bernard Scott knocked him off balance and Nelon Green ended up about three yards shy of finding the end zone. Well, you know, he tried to mix up and it happened, but again, he cut it. Cut, he cut your options down. I just marvel the way the Palatine play defense. They're in good position. Great speed got him on the outside, but normally that would have been stopped. Clemson calls timeout to discuss what they want to do. We'll return to Death Valley after these messages from your local ACC station. Back here at Death Valley, the Clemson Tigers deciding to try the field goal. David Richardson, who hit a 40-yarder in the first half after Mike Rice missed two field goals, will try this 20-yard attempt out of the hold of Chris Robbins. And he 
gets it inside the left upright. And Clemson extends its lead to 12 to 3. But they are still without a touchdown from their offensive unit. Advance Auto Parts is proud to be a corporate donor to the Juvenile Diabetes Foundation. Over the past two months, Advance Auto Parts stores throughout the southeastern region of the United States have raised over $450,000 to fight this disease. Today, we would like to salute the Charlestown Highway store in Case, South Carolina for its efforts in this fight. Advance Auto Parts and the Juvenile Diabetes Foundation, together walking for the cure. David Richardson, the junior out of Clemson, South Carolina, puts Clemson up 12 to three. Let's go down to the Tiger sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Well, Tommy West just explained to his offensive unit, they tried to convince him to go for the touchdown then, but Tommy says, nope, I want to make it so they've got to come down and score twice to take the lead. Let's go ahead and kick the field goal. Let's get up and then let's go on and put this ball in the end zone next series. I don't know if it was a function as much of going for it on fourth as it was to get back to their game plan on first down. Tigers go 95 yards on the drive before getting the field goal from David Richardson. Mike Price will kick it off. It's a short kick. Picked up by a paladin, and he is going to be smothered at the 21 yard line. John Keat was the guy who came up with the ball. But Furman not able to get much out of a short kick because of the mishandle. As we said, 95 yards in 10 plays, culminating in the Richardson field goal. It took nearly five minutes of time off the clock. Furman moved the ball on its initial possession of the second half before breaking down thanks to that relentless pressure on quarterback Brandon Bonaventure inside the 40-yard line of Clemson. See if they continue the play-action work on first down. Clark, the fullback, play-action to Moore. Bonaventure in trouble, and down he goes. Howard Bartley coming off the perimeter, and Raymond White up the middle. Don't make it Donald Broomfield up the middle as Bartley gets the sack. Yeah, Brian Nutter, 71. So he gets off right on the edge. He's on Bartley, and Bartley comes around the corner. They got pressure inside, outside, Bloomfield. It's uh, it's rough. Steady diet of it. And you know what? If you call the play, you said play action. Well, they've done it like four times in a row. And now they have a second and long. Call it second and 16. 315 to play here in the third quarter. Quick little slant play to the fullback, Parrish Clark. Gets it out close to the 20-yard line, but it'll still leave a third and about 11 as Lorenzo Bramell makes the stop, the junior out of Chopi, South Carolina. That's a nice play. Nice run for him. Paris Strongman, one of the strongest players on this team. Furman desperately trying to avoid a three-and-out situation here to give their defense a breather after that long drive by Clemson. But they have not converted on third down this afternoon. They have to go to the tight end, try to get athletes on athlete. Clemson showing blitz, and whistles blow, and flags fly, and might have had a violation of the huddle clock. James Knight will tell us. Find that button, Jim. There you go. It was a dead ball foul. Delay a game. Puts it back inside the 15 and makes the situation even tougher for Bobby Johnson's Paladins. Oh, you know he's frustrated. They get a kickoff. It's a poor kickoff, and they don't convert it. They don't take advantage of it, and they have a bad play to start things off on the first down. Not many infractions on the afternoon. Again, Clemson shows blitz, but rushes only four. Bonaventure up the sidelines. It's caught, but it will be a couple of yards shy of the first down. Jody Wade caught the ball under tight coverage from Andy Ford, but he's about four yards shy of the first down. Now, this has happened on a number of occasions today. We'll receive a good, good bump by Ford, 
But why break it off early? If you don't get the necessary distance, you're going to punt. Yeah, the bump by Andy Ford did knock him off for the necessary yardage. But then your internal clock's got to tell you to keep pushing it, get that stem, reestablish that stem. Dexter McLean awaiting the punt of Jody Wade, who has been a busy guy in that category. And drives this ball, McLean, over the shoulder, back inside his 20. Trying to get to a wall, good block at the 25, and McLean still on his feet. One man to beat. Trying to run by Jody Wade, the punter throws him out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. What a hit by John Thompson to spring Dexter McLean for 50 yards after a 52-yard punt. You talk about a team that needed a break. Special teams and defense, they have been close to dominant. You know, Jack, you talk about it so often. Sometimes you outkick the coverage. What, well, he got away with one right at the point of attack. So he's smart enough to let the fence build up. There's that key block. And the rest is a young man that can get it downfield. Boy, John Thompson with a nice block right on the edge. Watch the block. Watch the left side of your screen right there. Oh, man. Oh. John Thompson. Bungalow block. We used to call those bungalows. Un unloaded on Colin Rogers. First down for the Tigers. Raymond Priester. Priester. Inside the 10 yard line. Boy, he's impressive. Seth Romaley was able to haul him down. But Priester knocks the Tigers closer to Pater. He is press impressive. And I know that Steve Wilson, Furman's coordinator, is just tickled every time they don't give him the ball. Oh, I'd give you a steady die to this big fella. You'd hate me. First and goal on the nine. My goodness. Final minute of the third quarter. Clemson trying to score its first offensive touchdown in seven quarters. That's the fullback, Emery Smith, inside the five. Orlando Ruff on the stop. The Clemson offense has not scored since Emery Smith scored midway through the fourth quarter in the game against South Carolina. Touchdowns, that is, as you see Brian Daler, the injured player. I hope that's just a cramp, because he has had one heck of a game. I think that's cram. Next Saturday, 12 o'clock start here on these ACC stations. We'll have a great conference matchup, the Maryland Terrapins and the Virginia Cavaliers. This Maryland team doing a little bit of everything, not just the run and shoot anymore. They now have much more of a running game. And of course, that Virginia defense is awesome. Boy, they're brutal. And you got Barber who can turn the corner with the best of them. But again, it's going to be a great defensive matchup. Maryland, Virginia. 12 o'clock next Saturday. We hope you can join us for all the action. Many of you can see the ACC Football Today show starting at 11.30. Tommy West football team has its second and goal at the Furman Four. Their touchdown came on a fumble recovery by Eric Bradford in the first quarter. Kelton Dunnigan in the ball game. But it's Priester getting the football. Priester stacked up, did not get it in. Down inside the two, and we've got a penalty marker on the play. Orlando Ruff. You gotta love the linebacker's name, Ruff. Oh, what a name. Or the defensive back a couple of years ago for <laughs> NC State, Sebastian Savage. Savage, yeah, yeah that was a I good like one. Those names. I like that. Lando Rub. Offsides called against Furman. Let's see what Clemson decides to do. They would probably take the penalty because it will give them about the same amount of yardage and give them the down back. Down to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. Guys, I'll tell you, this Furman defense has been on the field most of the third quarter. They are really tired, really sucking wind. They're not many two deeps to come in and give the guys a blow. They've been out there the whole game and uh, they're in desperate need of some oxygen right now. It's really hot here. It's really humid here today and they're trying to gut it out but they're kind of wearing down. You can tell how hot it is here when you look at the stands on the north side of this stadium. It's not full because it's just too hot on that side. Touchdown, Emerson Smith. And the Clemson offense finally finds the end zone with eight seconds to go here in the third quarter. 
Well, you notice they didn't do it in that three receiver set. They did it the way they play football. You line up and ride your horses. That offensive line, and again, Furman did a great job, a super challenge. But this offensive line, that 95-yard drive they had uh, in the last series, this is what the dividend is. You want to pay it off with a touchdown. Now the great punt return by Dexter McLean set it up. And now the Tigers have opened up this 15-point lead. David Richardson to tack on the extra point. It wasn't pretty, but it got through. And Clemson is out to a 16-point advantage. One more look at the touchdown. We've talked about this offensive line a lot today. They got a chance to cash it in. Bundren, Butler, Trimble, Roundtree, and Fostel up front. This is what you wait for. And they've cut down on the celebration rules, but I hope they never take it away from things like that because, boy, that's what it's all about. Well, that's good to, while we've got the moment, Doc, to talk about that. There is nothing wrong with celebration when it's done as a group. Right. It's when, I think, as Bradley Faircloth, the director of officials for the conference told us it's when an individual tries to bring the focus just on himself no, right. that it's a problem and I think that's I think that's a good good rule that the NCAA has initiated and you know it, and there he is he's excited about it and here's the rest of the guys that made it possible it, that's that's terrific that's, that's the yeah. exuberance that you should have in college football I think that fan is working. I don't think that fan's working. Boy, that's a collective sigh of relief. Yeah, it's that that really. This team will go on the road for its next game to play the Missouri Tigers as the ACC battles the Big 12. Tyrone Berrien is back along with Josh Cole now to receive the kickoff of David Richardson. Eight ticks on the clock remaining here in the third quarter. Take it inside the five. As a seam, Cole out over the 35 and all the way to the 49-yard line. A great return. Joe Woods saved the touchdown. 46 yards on the return by Josh Cole. Boy, oh, that's the answer right back here. We've seen some great special teams. Watch the wall. That wall separates. There's nobody in the crease. Ninth break to the left, and there he turns on the jet. And Joe Woods is lucky to have slowed him down. He might have taken him to this one. Final play of the third quarter here in Clemson. The Tigers leading Furman 19 to 3. Welcome back to Clemson, South Carolina, where the hometown Tigers have a 16 point lead as we start the fourth quarter. Best position to start a drive in the second half for Furman after the 46-yard kickoff return by Josh Cole. Bonovich gives it to his tailback, Crosby, and he does all he can to get a yard on the play. Mom Wilson is there to make the hit. Statistically, the game has belonged to the Clemson Tigers. With a better than 200 yard advantage. They have missed a couple of field goals. They have had a couple of costly mistakes on offense, but their defense has been rock solid. Brandon Bonaventure has been sacked eight times on the day. And he'll give it to Crosby with a little bit of running room, but quickly cut off by Anthony Simmons. Not only is he quick, Rick, but he is so sure with his tackling. Hey, you don't see guys run out of his out of his grasp. But he's got real, a rare combination of speed. He's strong, but he has great leverage. He, he disengages from blocks. We'll see you watching there. Not only does he grab him, but he spins him down. And Crosby goes 205. Third down. Let's call it seven for the Paladins. Just underway here in the fourth quarter. Again, showing guys up front. Pressure on. Simmons has got him, and down goes Bonaventure. Anthony Simmons showing that 95 was not a fluke. 96 might be even better. Well, what happens on this? This is an, an alignment deal, delayed blitz. Inexperienced lineman, so you get caught. What happened on that? Mark Graves fell for the okie doke. He checked the backer. Backer stayed. He turned away. Backer comes. Quarterback gets hit. Let me write that down. He fell for the, the okie doke. 
Yes. <laughs> Officially, they will say that was the seventh sack in the afternoon for Clemson. I think there were a few others that could have been put into that category. Jody Wade with another punt, and it's a dandy. McLean will let it bounce, and it will go into the end zone. And the Tigers will get it on their own 20-yard line following the 52-yard punt. This is the only Division I opponent that Furman is going to play this year. And if they avoid the injuries, flag on the play, and we'll check the infraction, if they can avoid injuries here, they'll build on this game and their efforts to become one of the elite again in one double-A. Well, they're, they're headed in the right direction. I'm very impressed with the discipline of this team. Fundamentally, they're sound. We watched them last year in the opener against Tech, and they were really young. And Tech took advantage of them. Uh, their defense, I mean, they can play. They, they are as good uh, as anybody that they'll face all year. And I, and I think they're going to build on this and really be a factor in the Southern Conference. Inadvertent flag in the play. So it's first and 10 for the Tigers on their own 20. And Brandon Streeter, who played a series in the first half and threw an interception, is back in the ball game at quarterback for Clemson. Sam Sanders is in a tailback. Streeter on the quick roll finds his target Justin Watts the former quarterback out of Florence South Carolina will pick up a couple on the play knocked out by John Keith the freshman Clemson will have a bye week next week before they'll deal with the Missouri Tigers on the 21st out in Columbia. They don't like going to Columbia, South Carolina. I have to deal with Columbia, Missouri. <laughs> Sanders fighting his way forward out over the 25, almost to the 28-yard line for the freshman out of Arlington, Virginia. He enrolled in Clemson in January, so he was able to participate in spring practice even though he's a true freshman. Well, I like this. Clemson is trade, putting some people in the lineup now. Big number 71, Corey Halsley, 6'7", 345 pounds. He's my kind of guy. I'd hang out with him if I was part of this team. Imagine I'd have to buy him lunch. Imagine the family grocery bill for that young man. <laughs> Third and short yardage, Streeter, quick toss out to Watts, and he is not going to get the first down. Bernard Scott, the junior from St. Augustine, Florida, has played a terrific game defensively. Made the play in the open field along with Seth Romaley. Yeah, boy, you gave him his propers on that. He, these guys have been active. Look how what the position, uh, Jack. They're, they're there. And I like Slash. I, I think I'm going to have to start calling uh, Watt Slash. Any quarterback that can play wide receiver and is tough and makes blocks, he gets my respect. Kevin Laird, the punt for the is another punt from Kevin Laird. Josh Cole will be the safety, and Clemson is short a guy. They're down to 10 on the huddle clock, but they get Michael Allen out there in time. And Laird gets it away. Cole will let it bounce. And it is grabbed inside the 35-yard line, and that's where Furman will have it when we return. 11.06 to play in this one. Clemson leading by 16. Warm afternoon here in Clemson, but the Tiger fans breathing a little bit easier as their team is up by 16 with nearly four minutes gone in the fourth quarter. First and 10 for Furman and Bonaventure will put it up a little bit of time. Now he's flushed out of the pocket and short hops the football intended for Mark Cirqua, the fullback. Good pressure from Harold Means, a freshman out of Spartanburg, to pressure Bonaventure. It looked like he had some room and some time, and then Mr. Means came along. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, they've had a man. <laughs> feeling a void very well for Clemson all day long. And they've been able to rotate their players, and for the most part, uh, Furman's offensive line is still intact, and that doesn't spell well on a day that's sweltering heat. Tell you what, they know how to recruit linebackers at this school, don't they? Simmons and Jones were true freshmen a year ago. Means a true freshman playing in there now. Pressure on to go with a draw play to Mark Moore, and he goes nowhere. It's Harold Means again. Harold says, how do you do? Glad to meet you. I'm glad to be out here. 
you know what happens is that kids like to go to schools that have tradition at those positions. They have it here. And you get to run, and there's four of them in here. Now you're starting to see the physical mismatch. The two of the guys are just bigger and strong. Maybe we should also say that they know how to coach linebackers at Spartanburg High because yeah, Simmons right, is from right, Spartanburg, right. and so is Means. Third and long. We've been saying that all day for Brandon Bonaventure. He's going to have that rolling through his head all night long. Clemson with seven guys up close on the line of scrimmage, and we get a delay a game call against the Paladins. And we have a delay of game penalty against the Paladins. Now, Jack, when you look at the possibilities of Trevor Price, if he's allowed to play next week for Clemson on that defensive line, I mean, it, it, everything I hear about this guy is that he is definitely legit. It'll help a very good defense get that much better. Bonaventure on third and long. Look out. Trying to stay on his feet. Gets it away. It's caught by Circle. He fumbles the football. It's still loose. And Clemson comes away with the ball. Brad Pope is the guy who forced the fumble and came up with the football. Actually, Tony DeSue was the guy who made the hit to force the fumble, and Brad Pope came away with it. I still have to marvel over Bonaventure. This guy's been able to get out of a jam. He's shown great athletic ability. He is just outmanned. There's just too many Clemson Tigers, and he still makes the play throws across his body. It appears to be good throw and catch, but then this. Don't give it up easy. Mark Moore, the receiver, coughed up the football. Brad Pope with the recovery. And Billy Lucky will now get a chance to play quarterback for the Tigers. Another redshirt freshman. He's out of Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And we've got a timeout called, I believe, by Furman. It's the Lucky was highly recruited. Had a chance to uh, be at a quarterback club lunch and dinner with him and meet, met him and his family and good folks. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Well, I think, Doc, as you and I viewed this game, for the Clemson Tigers, while it would have been ideal to come out and, and play a near perfect ball game, maybe as the season progresses, the fact that this team still had to deal with their own internal struggle may pay benefits as the year goes on. The fact that they had to dig deep against a team, they didn't think they'd have to do that. Well, when you play defense the way Clemson plays defense, sooner or later, good things will happen to your football team. Sanders and Emory Smith behind Lucky, and it's Sanders getting the carry, and he'll go straight ahead for a couple of yards. Daryl Smith there on the stop, among others, for Furman. The unfortunate thing about football on a D1 level with a lot of pressure on you is that kids are still 18, 19, 20 years old. You know, and, and people have booed them, and people have looked down at them the past couple of outings, and they've got to fight through it, and it's not that difficult. It's hard to do when you're that young. Well, and it's something that, quite frankly, Clemson Tiger football players have not been accustomed to doing as much. They've had that winning tradition. They're not used to struggling. And Corey Halsey got a little bit ahead of everybody else there, trying to get his 345 pounds in gear, and that but will back up the Tigers. That's a lot of weight. Once he gets down in his stance, you know, he starts to lean in a little bit. There's no way he can stop that. Out of Lula, Georgia, North Hall High School. Boy, that's the six, big man. seven, three hundred and forty-five pounds. Which means he's about three sixty. <laughs> <laughs> but I've watched him though, you know, and he's got some feet. It's hard to have good feet when you're that big. Well, if you're playing as a true freshman, you know, normally the big guys on the offensive line are almost automatically red shirted right. their freshman year. <laughs> on second down. Lucky trying to keep it himself. Broke the tackle of Bernard Scott. 
Billy Lucky into the secondary, finally dragged down on the play by Kevin Jackson. But Billy Lucky has himself a first down. Billy Lucky on the quarterback. Oh, that's got to feel good for that young man. You know, you're a star in high school. Then you come in and you don't get a chance to play. They sit you on the rack. And all of a sudden, you're at home and you get a 17-yard gain. You get to get hit. The biggest thing you miss is the contact. And now you're back playing football again. That's, that's good to see. Well, they think this young man has the strongest throwing arm of the three quarterbacks. But there it was scrambling feet that got him 17 yards and a first down. Lucky on the toss to Zanders. Dunnigan with a block in the corner and Zanders takes it down close to another first down. Down around the 16 yard line where Rico Perkins knocked him out of bounds. Furman as this game winds down and all the time their defense has played has a lot of second teamers out there now. Yeah, they do. And it's good to get some experience and to, and to get after it, but it's hard to, to get a hold of speed. Sanders can run, he can scoot. Second and about a yard. Dunnigan, the fullback, will have the first down. Fifth year senior out of Sumter, South Carolina. Phil Warren, one of the starters still in there, makes the stop along with linebacker Daryl Smith. Dunnigan is one of those rare individuals that get three years of junior college transfers that get to actually play three years of college football. Was injured in his second year of college, of junior college ball. That's why he was able to get a third year here at Clemson. On first down at Sanders again, cutting back. Sanders down inside the 10 to about the six yard line. Mike Davis, first man to hit him for Furman. Here's a guy, you know, coach about 215, can run, but you're so accustomed to, to Mr. Priester. And then you watch him again. I always judge it back by what he does once somebody hits him. There, there we got some of those big young guys up front again. You know, you get a chance to go out and show your skills. There's Landry, 61, in their wrestling. Brent Vanassi gets as well with a pretty good block on second down. Nothing going there because Reggie Williams, the nose guard, stacked up Dunnigan right as he got the football. Now, Vanessa, which was he? He's a red shirt. No, he's sophomore. Red shirt sophomore. Yeah, red shirt sophomore, yeah. So again, they put some guys out on the field that had a little, had a little action. They have, only, they have only one senior in the two deep of their offensive yeah. line. Yeah. So. And for Raymond Priester, the fact that he's a junior, if he decides to come back for senior year, we'll have a very experienced group in front yeah. of him. I think I'd want to hang around this group a while. 115 yards on the ground in the second half for the Tigers. Lucky on the bootleg, but they didn't go for the fake, and Orlando Ruff makes a good open field tackle. They drop him for a loss and set up another field goal try. We saw Orlando Ruff play a great ball game against Georgia Tech a year ago. Yep. Here's a young guy with good range. He has the great name, the all-name team, closes in, and it makes a play. You know, they've had uh, Hubbard, who's played well today, Daler, Scott, uh, Thier, Smith. They've had, they've been well represented on defense. David Richardson's made a 40-yard and 20-yard field goal. This will be a 27-yard attempt. Chris Robbins hold, and the kick sails wide right. Third field goal missed on the afternoon by the Tigers, so it remains 19-3 with 5.32 to play in this one. We'll take a break in the action here at Death Valley. Clemson on its way to its first victory in 96. Well, the Clemson field goal kickers have gone two for five on the afternoon as David Richardson misses his first. The Clemson field goal unit as they try and replace Jeff Sauve, who had a good year last year for the Tigers, made 15 of 20 with a 47-yarder at his best. They also had replaced punter Chris McAnally. Kevin Laird has done a pretty good job punting for the Tigers today. First 
down for Furman at their own 20. Braniff Bonaventure looking for the quick out to Luther Broughton, his tight end. Breaks one tackle, and Broughton carries people out over the 35 to the 37-yard line and will probably have a face mask penalty tacked onto that as well. Chris Jones on the stop, but might have had a pace of the face gear. Well, Broughton gives you this. You can put him out in a flex position or at the wide receiver spot. He'll make people miss. It's good athletic ability. Here's a big guy who can rumble. Unfortunately, they didn't get to him in the first half with this kind of play. Only the second catch on the afternoon. Well, they tried Big Luther early in the ballgame, and he dropped he the dropped ball. one. Yeah, he dropped one. The penalty is a 15-yarder that will move the ball into Clemson territory. Face mask, defense from the end of the line. Luther is 31 catches away from being the number one all-time receiver at Furman. Saw what he did a year ago. They'd like him to be even more a factor this year than the 39 catches he had last season. Back in Clemson territory, Furman's been there a few times today, but just the field goal to show for it. Brandon Bonaventure will go down again. Brett Williams making the hit. Graduate student out of Albany, Georgia, one of several graduate students on this Clemson team. Yeah, see, so they run a game, a little tackle stunt inside and the left side. He just flat gets by another. And, and what happens is that I get a little concerned about my quarterback now. I really would because it comes a point in time when you got to look towards the regular season. I'm sure Coach Johnson, you know, he's got to make a call, but now his QB's taking a beating. Well, at 6'1", 195, Brandon Bonaventure shows he's a pretty tough guy, and he's going to take another hit, fumbled the football. Yeah, he's tough, but you're not trying to test his manhood. You're trying to keep your quarterback healthy for the regular season. They said that he was down before he lost the football. The hit came from Rudy Curry, a junior out of Lakewood, Ohio. Seven yards off the play, and the ball is ruled I mean, At this point, you know, they're jailbreak. It is that safety is big at people coming coming from all over the place to come in Bonavent. See, he has no position right now to protect himself. And he loses the football, and the guy's a heck of an athlete. He's had a nice day under the circumstances. Nine sacks on the afternoon for Clemson, and they have pressured Bonaventure oh, yeah. all afternoon. We had a pressure stack. It'd be a triple digit. Third and a bunch again. Third and 24. Little inside screen, good catch by Josh Cole. Cole breaks some tackles. He's going to have the first down. Josh Cole with a good run. Andre Carter will run him down, but he takes it down to the Clemson 29-yard line. Well, Josh is a 4-5-40 man, and he shows that a lot of guys run, run straight ahead well, but what he impressed me with is that he can accelerate Really quickly, he makes a great catch, first of all. Reads the blocks well. Got some guys chipping downfield for him. Now watch him with the burst. See, he pours it on, picks up some additional yard. 33-yard completion on the flanker screen. First and 10, Furman inside the Clemson 30. 320 to play in the game. Draw play to Mark Moore, and he goes nowhere because Raymond White had great penetration out of his middle guard spot. Wow. Raymond White. Wow, he bench pressed Mark Graves on that one. White goes around 270. 6'3. Junior out of Clinton, Mississippi, a management major who played at middle guard last year and made 75 tackles. He's been a factor here today. Bonaventure to the sidelines. Short gain on the play down to about the 25 yard line to Tyrone Berry and the redshirt freshman. Antoine Edwards covered him up almost immediately. It'll make it third and about six. And Furman will use its final timeout with 2.38 to play. Well, they want to get this offense in the end zone. It's a pride thing right now for 
for Furman as well. You want to stay on the attack. They're showing that right now possibly the best drive that they've had, and, and guys are staying in there fighting their guts out. Well, we said that a little earlier, Doc. Bears repeating for Bobby Johnson. I mean, he, he probably sensed and his staff did that coming in, it was going to be a struggling Clemson team that they were going to face. Maybe you could pull off the big upset, but most importantly, be competitive. We remember a year ago when a much younger Furman team went down to Atlanta and played Georgia Tech and got pummeled. Yeah, they were not. And it really affected the first half of their season. Now, the Paladins can move into their one double A schedule the rest of the way and feel pretty confident. Yes, indeed. Uh, they're a nice football team. I like them a lot. I mean, you've got well, the sound. See, fundamentally, these guys are sound. They play good special team. Their defense is experienced. Bonaventure, I mean, if, if he can survive through the heat he received today in Death Valley, then uh, I'd hate to see this guy on a neutral playing field. Well, for Furman, with Marshall and Appalachian State as the considered top two teams in the conference, I think they have to feel like, hey, we're right there with Georgia Southern and maybe have a chance to, to knock off App State or, or Marshall and, oh, yeah. and get themselves into the 1AA playoffs well, if they can stay healthy. Yeah, I don't think they have to apologize for their success one bit. I mean, they, they, they want to get back to their glory years where they dominated the conference, and it looks like they've got the personnel intact now. And let's not kid ourselves. They have a tremendous academic uh, tradition at Furman, and uh, they're getting it done in the classroom as well as on the field. Third down situation for Bonaventure. Third and six from the Clemson 25. The Tigers banning up and sending a lot of heat. Bonaventure trying to get away from it, lets it go, and is well short of the intended target, but he gets to live another day and try and convert on fourth down. Yeah. Bo Davis was the closest paladin to the football. Didn't get hit. You know, we talk about their academic standards, but when you can play competitive football and graduate 77% of your, your uh, team, you're doing pretty well. Lots of heat all day on Brandon Bonaventure between the sacks and the pressures, and you got to believe that Ellis Johnson has sent in the same plan on fourth down. Lots of heat and coverage. Got to catch up Bonaventure to Broughton, the tight end. First down inside the 15-yard line. Got it away quick. Andre Carter with the stop, but Luther Broughton gets another Furman first down as they try and find the end zone. Yeah, this is when you've got a big body. You're six foot three, you're 260, and he goes down, scoops up a low pass. He's impressive. He is impressive. Here you watch him again. Nice little. Nice little out. Kind of bleed a little bit downfield. You like to have guys come back to the ball, but he makes the play. First down. Clock stopped as Rotten went out of bounds with 2.28 to play. Bonaventure to throw again. Has some time. And will run out of bounds as Adrian Dingle chases him that way. When you think about this offensive line, and now Mark Foster, he's there. He's getting some work. And Ben Hall, Lee Drake, Sander, they're going to see Clemson in their sleep tonight. Bonaventure had Bo Davis open, but he was only about a yard or two beyond where Braniff went out of bounds and didn't want to risk turning the ball over, so they'll try it at second and ten. Cole and Wade to his left. Rotten is flexed on the right side. Under pressure, and down he goes. Kind of ran into Adrian Dingle, who was lying on the ground. <laughs> those defensive guys love those. Those are gimmies, but you'll take them. Just so much pressure. And Brandon, again, he's got to think to himself, I know they're somewhere close to me. I just don't know where. And his offensive line it is frustrating. You see. Brian Nutter, and he's just throwing his arms up. That's the 11th sack of the afternoon for Clemson. That's a new school record, and there's number 12. Eric Bradford, Donald Brumell, or Lorenzo Brumell, and Donald Broomfield, all three of them there to sack Bonaventure back at the 29-yard line, setting up a fourth down and 24. Well, if we can coach from the booth. And now's the time for one of those quick two-step fades. That's all he's got a shot at. Drop back and get it up. He has no chance to run his offense. 
Kitchings and Wade will go left. Rotten and Davis to the right. Out of the shotgun on fourth down. Find Josh Cole. Bonaventure looking down the middle and it is nearly intercepted by Antoine Edwards. Would have been shy of the first down anyway. It will turn the ball over. 56 seconds to play in this one. Clemson will win its first of the year. They lead by 16. Final minute of action here at Clemson as the Tigers well just run out the clock firm and out of timeouts no chance to stop it and while it wasn't a thing of beauty or a dominating win it is a victory and when you have been searching for one you'll take it in almost any form and with the open date next week it really gives them a chance to try and build before that game with Missouri. Well first of all you take the bags off your heads and you walk around campus. He feels good about going to practice and it's good for self-esteem. Billy Lucky. Will toss it to Xanders. Sam will get a couple on the play. John Keith and Lando Ruff there. The the Tigers. Have to run maybe one more play to finish this one up. These two teams played 100 years ago to get Clemson football underway. Tommy West, a guy who knows all about the tradition at this school after his tenure as an assistant coach here and now in his third season as the head man for these Tigers. Dunnigan straight ahead and that will do it. Ruff and Smith there, Bobby. Dunnigan on the carry for the Tigers. Come across, Bobby Rich, Bobby Johnson will come across and congratulate Tommy West in a football game that both sides can walk away with some good feelings. Clemson because they got the victory and Furman because they were very tough playing their lone one double one a opponent on the schedule this year. They have nothing to hold their head down about them. They're a good football team. So the Tigers will kind of get an opportunity to almost get back to the beginning with the off week before they deal with Missouri in a couple of weeks. Tommy West is with Mike Hogwood to talk about the win for the Clemson Tigers. There guys, at the end of a football game, as everybody comes on the field, a lot of Tommy West's young friends are here, and a win is a win, and you're back home, and it's got a... Well, a win feels really good, and we're not in a position where we can take wins for granted. So, uh, you know, a lot of areas to improve. we got to go back and improve the kicking game in our offense. Well, your offense in the second half, I thought, really performed better. We came out in the second half and did the things we can do, uh, and I thought we improved. We took it from the two, moved it down the field, and then, but we got to get, when we got a chance to kick field goals, we got to make it. We've talked up at the booth, this is the kind of team where you probably don't, you're not yelling at them now, you're hugging them, saying, come on, guys, because it, it's, it's a confidence thing now because you know they can perform. It's just, it, it, they're, and they're trying so hard out there, maybe too hard. Well, I thought we came out uh, really excited and ready to play, and we drive the ball down the field, we missed two field goals, and it tie, that'll just take the wind out of you. So, I mean, we, we, we got to go back and correct everything, but we're one and one now, won a football game, which is what we came in here to do. And I know as coach of this team, you still believe in these guys that this is going to be a good season for Clemson football. Yeah, we just got to keep working and keep improving. What about your defense today? I thought they were just overpowering over this Furman team. Well, I think we played well two weeks in a row on defense. I thought we played well enough to win on defense a week ago until we ran out of gas. So, uh, yeah, I think our defense right now is gaining confidence. We're playing a lot of young people, but I think we're gaining confidence and getting better. That's a little time, and it's off to Missouri, and I know you're going to relish the time and, and probably the chance to play another game out of conference before you settle down with this league schedule. Yeah, well, we, we need next week to go back and, and continue to try to improve this football team, so that's what we'll do. Tommy, uh, enjoy the win. Uh, big win for Clemson here at home, and I know it's good to be back in Death Valley. It sure is. Thanks. All right, Jack, back to you. All right, Mike, and indeed, Tommy West is a guy, I think, who does a good job of keeping things in perspective for this team, and, and certainly Clemson has dealt with a, a lot of off-the-field adversity uh, over uh, the offseason and into the start of this year, and Tommy West is sort of that calming agent uh, in the midst of the storm to try and get the ship righted. Yeah, they're very young, young people. They've had some altercations off the uh, field of play, which are, are devastating to a football team. He's got to rally the troops, 
regain that confidence. They needed a win. They needed to score touchdowns, and they needed to continue uh, their dominance on defense, and they did all of the above. Got the victory today, and they'll move on to Missouri in a couple of weeks. We'll be back with more post-game activities from Death Valley right after these words. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week was brought to you by your neighborhood Exxon dealers and distributors who invite you to stop by for a gasoline that helps keep your fuel system clean. Exxon 93 Supreme. Rely on the Tiger. By Pepsi. Nothing else is a Pepsi. By Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. By First Union. And by Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. Well, some of the fans having a little bit of fun with the uprights. Maybe if it was tilted like that, a few more of those field goals might have snuck in the right-hand corner for Clemson. But the Tigers, scored. that's right, the Tigers win it this afternoon, 19 to three. And while Neilan Green won't call this the game the greatest of his career, I think the fact that the offense got going in the second half is what Neilan will build on. Yeah, and the fact that he was on the field. I mean, he played three quarterbacks today. And it was important to get the running game going. He made a couple of key throws. He tried to exert himself running the football, and he's their starting QB. He is one of the experienced quarterbacks in the conference this year, and he is the guy who the Tigers know has to be effective for them to win. He is down in the field to talk with Mike Hogwood. Well, Jack, this is the man who is undoubtedly the leader of this offense, Nelon Green. Nelon, you've sputtered a little bit early in the season. But I get the feeling you guys still believe that you can go out there and move the football, put points on the board. Yeah, we, we had a lot of drives that we should have we should have um, got the ball in the end zone. And unfortunately, we made some bad things happen. And they play really tough. And we just got to correct the mistakes and come out, you know, after this week off and come back and try to play harder. What about you and your confidence? Uh, is shaking at all? You still believe it? No, I'm, I'm definitely still have my confidence. I just, I just had to start making plays when, when they're there and, you know, and keep my team make sure my team is still focused out there and let's try to make the plays and today we made some plays happen and that was positive you hit a big pass play today too and when Furman was really playing run really ganging up there uh, Tommy West has talked about that's what you have to do to move the football that had to be a good feeling that big pass completion. yeah and, and that goes to the running game I mean our offense line did a great job and Raymond ran the ball pretty well and Emory did some things and the safety started, started getting involved in, in the run, and we, we just got behind them, and Kenya made a great catch and a great run after the catch. What's ahead for this football team in this season? Right now, we're just trying to take it week, week by week and practice by practice and go out work hard every practice and get better and correct the mistakes that we, that we made today, and hopefully down the line we can um, pull this thing together. Well, Neilan, congratulations on the win over Furman, and uh, good luck to you. Thanks a lot. All right. That's Neilan Green, who says he still has his confidence, still believes, Jack. Well, you better have your leader have confidence if you are going to be successful in 1996. And one of the things for Neilan Green and the Clemson offense to feel good about is the fact that the guys they practice against all the time, that Clemson defense is going to keep them in games every week. They got 14 players in their front seven. Uh, Williams, White, uh, Plant, and Badford, uh, Broomfield, and, and, and Brumel. What these guys did today impressed the heck out of me, not to mention their linebackers. Abdullah, he's a star in the making. Well, you get people like Abdullah and, of course, Anthony Simmons at the linebacking core, and that great veteran defensive secondary, one of the best corner men in the conference, Dexter McLean, is down on the field with Mike Hogwood. You had a big punt return today, and the defense smothered Furman's offense. You have to feel good about that. That was our goal today, to come out and post a shutout. But we gave up the three points, but we're still not disappointed. We felt we had a great effort all across the defensive line, and everyone came to play today. What about this team when the offense is struggling? And I know the defense feels it's got to step up a little bit. You did that today. You got a touchdown on the board, and you really gave the offense some good field position. That was our goal coming coming out of the week was to score a touchdown on defense. It's something that we haven't done much of since I've been here. And um, it was our goal to make things happen on defense. And we came out today and we did that and gave the offense a big lift. What about the season ahead now? I know everybody was down after the loss to North Carolina, but now your record's even, one and one, and you have to feel you can proceed on from this point and go on and have a great season. Two games down. I mean, it's still a long season, nine games left. And, hey, we just got to continue to work hard and try to improve each week. All right. Good luck to you, Dexter. Great game today. Thanks. Dexter McLean, big punt return today, and also a great, great game in the secondary. Jack? Well, that punt return was one of the big... Uh 
openers, if you will, for Clemson in the second half to finally get its scoring game going. We'll be back to talk to more of the Tiger heroes after this word from your local ACC station. The Tiger roared this afternoon at Death Valley as Clemson wins its first game of the 96 season, 19 to three over the Furman Paladins. And for the one double A Paladins, although it was not a victory this afternoon, it was a very strong effort. And I think we had to be most impressed, Doc, with that veteran defensive unit. All 11 starters back for Furman. And, and while some of it might have been Clemson struggling, a lot of it was because that's a pretty solid defense. Well, they got after him. They really did. You mentioned that Bernard Scott had it, broke his leg. Uh, a year ago he recovered he's athletic he had an interception he was all over the running game and the passing game for Clemson and these guys in the Southern Conference I would say look out because they are strong let's take a look at our food lion MVPs for the action this afternoon and Bernard Scott is our Furman most valuable player with seven tackles in the interception that set up the field goal and Raymond Priester over 100 yards for the afternoon 118 as he closes in on the 2000 yard mark in his career and in all likelihood might be a 3,000 yard rusher before his days wearing the Clemson purple and orange are done here in Death Valley. And speaking of Mr. Priester, he has been able to catch his breath. He's down on the field and he talked with our Mike Hogwood. Well, this is a man who was a bull out there in the second half. I know you were frustrated after last week, Raymond Priester, but today, second half, that offensive line gave you some holes and you took advantage of it. Yeah, they came out with a, you know, really good attitude to try to open up some holes and, you know, kind of get ourselves in some pretty good positions to score. And, uh, you know, I just took advantage of what they made for me out there. You got a lot of teams that are ganging up on you these days. Is that frustrating or do you still feel you can move the football getting it up in the air? I'm pretty sure that, you know, our team can move the football up, you know, pretty uh, up and down the field. You know, it's just we just look upon ourselves and, you know, dig deep in ourselves and just come out and play with the intensity and the mentality that we're used to. And, uh, you know, we can do pretty much anything we want to. You had a couple of runs where it was the Raymond Priester of old in there and you get into the secondary and you had folks you were carrying. You, you had to feel good in that second half. Yeah, I felt really good. You know, I uh, just wanted to touch the ball some, you know, uh, come out and just did my, did my best and, you know, things happen for me. All right, what's ahead for this team now? Even your record at one and one, and a lot of folks have picked you in the upper division of the ACC. Well, you know, we're going to put more preparation in, the, uh, you know, in our uh, next couple of games and, you know, just kind of, you know, look for, look within ourselves, you know, to find leaders and just come out and just play with more intensity. Go get them. Right, Raymond thanks. Priester. That's Raymond Priester. Had a big second half today, Jack. Well, Mike Hogwood had a big ball game all the way around working in that heat down there in the uh, shirt and tie. Good yeah, job, Yeah, we had his blazer Hawk. off the well, whole game. Well, yeah, yeah, but he's he played well, yeah, and when you want to talk about people playing well, it'd be hard to single out anybody on that Clemson defense because they really dominated, set a new school record with 12 sacks. Brandon Bonaventure, it was only his athleticism, Doc, that kept it from being more than a dozen sacks. Well, this guy, he's a escape artist. He got out of a lot, but the pressure was there. They didn't play wild defense. They played control within the framework of the defense, and they were just flat, too big, too strong, too fast for them. Well, they've got a veteran secondary, some great young linebackers, and a very solid group up front makes for a very good defense it's headed up by last year's national freshman of the year anthony simmons he's with mike hogwood anthony it was a heck of a game today on defense you had some unbelievable plays particularly putting pressure on bonaventure was that your game plan to the game go in and stick it to him um i think we just made a few adjustments just you know by saying they was gonna come out passing they started sending me a lot just to get a little bit of pressure on him what about this defense? I, you were smothering today. You were really good. You, you got to have confidence that that's what's going to make this football team the defense. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of people now are stepping up defense. So we know what we have to do, and we're just going to have to have a strong, solid defense to, you know, pretty much stand the game. Your offense struggling just a little bit, but you guys gave them some great field position. You even scored a touchdown. Are you, are you going to give them a hard time today? Yeah, we, we um, discussed last week, you know, we wanted to come out and score a touchdown, and, you know, we pretty much had it in our mind. We just have to come out and score. Good luck to you, Anthony. Great game. Congratulations on the win today. Anthony Simmons. He is a remarkable player, middle linebacker, and one of the best programs in the country at 6'1 and 210 pounds. The postgame party and going on here at Clemson. We'll be right back. Back here at Death Valley in Clemson where the Tigers knocked off Furman 19-3 this afternoon. 
after a 45 to nothing loss last week at Chapel Hill. The Tigers wanted a victory any way they could get it. It wasn't their greatest, but it was effective because it's in the proper column. A win is a win is a win, and, and that's on any level, high school, college, or the pros. As Tommy West said, they missed the three field goals, so those were more scoring opportunities that didn't come through. But as we take a look at the final stats from the ball game, you get a clear indication on the domination of the Clemson defense thanks to the 12 sacks. Furman, 29 yards in the negative numbers on the ground. Yeah, they'll be much better than that. I mean, they, they got in some situations where they were trying to throw the football. They had nowhere to run. But time of possession kind of even, and they've got something to build on. Offensively, Clemson got its running game going in the second half as Raymond Priester ended up with 118 yards individually. But I'm sure for Daryl Moody and the offensive staff, they want to make sure that that ground game does 200 plus each week if yeah, they, they can. They've also got to get into a rhythm. I'm sure Daryl is a little disappointed uh, at the first half and the fact that this team was kind of like floating around nowhere. Got some confidence they scored, and hopefully he'll get him back out on the practice field and get his message across to him because they've got the talent. Well, Clemson, you heard Anthony Simmons say that the defense went out with the idea that they were going to score a touchdown this week, and they did that early in the ball game. After a couple of missed field goals, pressure from Tony Planton forced a fumble, and it was recovered by Eric Bradford. Yep, no, this is not the play we expected to see. This was a fumble late in the yeah, ball Yeah, fumble game. coming up. And that was recovered. That sort of sealed the last chance that Furman had of making something happen, and that led to this touchdown by Emory Smith. Yeah, first and touchdown in but six quarters. First time in a long time for the offense to get the touchdown, and that was uh, a huge load off the back, not only, I think, of the offense, but the stands, the stands were really cheered dead. for the first time in a long yeah. time. They probably were as nervous about this game as the staff and players were. Yeah, it was not a good feeling. You go back to the bowl game, shut out Carolina, uh, first half here, and they were so close. They had a 95-yard drive. They had to settle for a field goal on. They were able to come back, and Emory Smith got the score. So Clemson will get the bye week and then get themselves set for Missouri. We're going to get ourselves set for a great game next week here on the ACC Game of the Week. We'll tell you about that when we return. Time. They've got time to get it done. A little technical difficulty going on right now, but final score Clemson 19, Furman 3. Next week, Maryland and Virginia up in Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. 